This very special Tuesday edition of Free Talk Live with me, Derek J. And Rich Paul. And uh, Rich, yesterday was a special 420 event, uh, 420, a uh, pot holiday, and you were doing something very special. Uh, I'd like to talk about that. Of course, this is the show where you can call in and talk about anything you want. So feel free to disagree with uh, we, the hosts. Uh, but <laughs> Rich, I think you were doing something pretty amazing yesterday at the State House. We touched on it a little bit on yesterday's episode of Free Talk Live. Um, but why don't you fill us in? Well, pretty much we we went out, we had about 60 people, and we went out in pouring rain yesterday, so it was really only the diehards who uh, showed up, but uh, we went out there and we smoked weed on the steps of the uh, state house, and we uh, talked to the passing state reps, and uh, we sang some songs to the legislature, and uh, basically had a good old time. Chris Cantwell also joins us in studio. And were you present at the Smoke Down Pro, or what was it called, Rich? The official title of uh, this uh, event. The title of the event was "Demand Repeal on the State House Lawn." So, were you present for this special event? I sure was, and it was a great event. I had a lot of fun. Uh, what were some of your initial reactions? Have you been to one of these in the past? I went to one when I first got here in 2012. And so uh, this this was my second one. I didn't go in 2013 or 2014. I had been out in New York and traveling around. But uh, this this was my second time there. It was a pretty good turnout considering the weather. When I went in 2012, the, the weather was much better. And uh, we got to go inside the State House in 2012 and sing inside the legislature, which was a riot. Uh, we didn't get to do that this time because we tried to go in just after 5 o'clock when they had closed the doors. Oh. Damn lazy potheads. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I figured... You know, it, it on one hand, going in was a good idea. On the other hand, if they're physically going to try to stop you, that's not the peaceful way to protest. So, More uh, on that, <laughs> but first, to the phones and the fun. Brody is calling from Pennsylvania. Uh, what's on your mind, Brody? Yeah, hey, uh, is he in there tonight or is he not there? He is not present this evening. It's Derek J., Rich Paul and Chris Cantwell. What's on your mind, Brody? Okay. All right. Well, uh, I don't know what your guys' opinion is. It's, uh, I heard uh, Ian uh, made a statement uh, last week on one of his sh- on one of the shows, but uh, what I was calling about is uh, you know, he seemed to think that uh, if you hire a hitman, that's somehow a criminal act, and I uh, tend to disagree with that. Oh, okay. Why do you disagree with that? Um, well, I don't think. Um, the reason I disagree with it is is paying giving someone goods or services is not in and of, of itself a criminal act. Also, uh, I don't know what you guys think, but I don't think asking someone to kill someone is criminal or asking someone to go steal something for you or hurt someone is criminal in and of itself. So I don't see how paying someone makes it any different. Well, the, the, the issue here is contracts, right? I mean, if, if, if that's not a criminal act, then basically contracts go out the window altogether. If you hire someone to do something on your behalf, he acts as your agent. He's carrying out your will. He is you. He is the blunt instrument. He is the weapon. So, uh, I mean, the, the entire principle of contracts is that you can hire someone to act as your agent. You're responsible for the actions of your agent. If you hire a hitman and he goes out and ends somebody's life, I mean, there might be a good reason for you to do that. I mean, you might have a good reason to end somebody's life, at which point it wouldn't be murder. But if you go out and hire a hitman to go murder some innocent person, that hitman is acting as your agent. You're responsible for his actions. And I, I have two issues with that. First of all, uh, that seems to take away free will because that person uh, is acting of their own volition. I'm not. Um, I'm not implying that they're not acting on their own volition, right? You're hiring them to go do something. But like, let's say, let's say if you um, if you come into my store, right, and and I have uh, employees working there, and one of my employees hauls off and punches you in the face. You're going to file a lawsuit, and you might name the employee, but you're most likely going to name my point, my place of business as well because I probably have the deeper pockets as the business owner, and I do incur a degree of responsibility when I hire people to work for me. Do I not? Um, I don't think so. As far as my understanding is, uh, you have the only ones who have legal responsibility in a business are supervisors because they actually have legal authority to make legal decisions for the business. Multiple people, though, can have uh, moral responsibility 
for the same act. If two men carry between them a box of uh, of explosives, they're both responsible for that act. Uh, the same is true, I believe, of of the man who paid them to do that, especially if they didn't know. Uh, and the uh, if a hitman is not responsible for for his acts, then the question becomes, does that apply? Or I'm sorry, if the person who hires a hitman is not responsible for his uh, for those acts, and I believe that he and the hitman would would both be responsible uh, for those acts, then you could commit the perfect crime by hiring somebody, for example, to move a box for you. Well, you know there are explosives in the box, but he doesn't. So right. he's not culpable for it because he didn't know, and you're not culpable for it because you didn't physically do it. It's the perfect crime. So I think you have to exclude that uh, that concept from your system of justice. Yeah, that just wouldn't seem right. Hey, Brody, I'm curious. Well, why did this come up on, on your mind? I know you said that Ian said something uh, about uh, hiring a hitman. Can you en- envision a situation where hiring a hitman is the right thing to do? Anyone? Well, I mean, before I answer that question, you you said two things that I want to address first. Uh, first of all, um, again, I, I if if asking some, do you think asking someone to kill someone is is makes you a uh, criminal? Asking if you ask to them someone? to do it and you have a reasonable belief that they will do it, then. Yes, if you ask them to do it in a joking context or knowing that they lack the the means or or opportunity or believing that they lack the means of opportunity, then I would say no. But if you ask somebody to do it and you expect them to do it, then yes, you bear a responsibility for for what they did, I believe. Well, anybody could just deny that they expected them to do it then. Well, they could deny it, but there might be other indications. For example, if I ask you to kill somebody and give you $10,000, that's a that's an indication that I intend to and expect to get my money's worth, or then I would have to go out and hire another hitman for you. So <laughs> Well, but so you say $10,000, what about a dollar? Uh generally a dollar is sufficient to conclude a contract, and that's really what we're looking for here. Uh, well, although a contract no does require that something of value be uh, be exchanged on on both sides generally, so the argument could be made that if you didn't ask, if you didn't pay for it, that it wouldn't be a contract. But I don't know. I would. I think. I think if you go say, "Hey, go kill that guy," and somebody says, "Oh, I'll do that out of personal loyalty." Then he's getting some kind of payoff of out of that, or he wouldn't be facing, you know, willing to face those repercussions. Yeah, and that seems like a really slippery slope to me because there there seems to be too much ambiguity myself. And as to the contract issue, I don't think um, I don't think anyone would um, believe a a killer contract against somebody who didn't deserve it would be actually a valid contract. Well, but look, if if I hire, let's say you hire somebody to do some kind of business for you, right? You hire someone to uh, to go and uh, uh, sell sell your widgets, right? And so you give him the widgets, and he goes out and uh, he goes out on the street in your like widget vending truck and says widgets for sale, widgets for sale, <laughs> and he goes out and sells the widgets, and then he comes back and says, well, I sold the widgets and I kept the money. Well, it's perfectly legal for you to give him widgets, right? But you didn't give him widgets. You made a contract. You made an agreement for him to act as your agent, as your seller. So when he goes out and conducts those transactions with people, he's acting as your agent. He's not uh, He's he's not uh, acting in, entirely autonomously, right? I mean, it's a, it's a situation where you expect something in return for what you've given, no? Well, yeah, but he's not committing a crime. All right. Very interesting call. Thank you for it, Brody. You can also dial in and take control, 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. When is it appropriate to hire a hitman? Is it ever? Hi, Ron Paul here. Today, I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. 
Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare, the erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country, with a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers. How can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24-7 to help you. We also have other pain-relieving braces, too, for your shoulder, ankle, or back. You may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you, so please call now. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. That is the toll-free call-in line. You can also Dial in on Skype, username lrn.fm. Usually sound a lot better when you call in that way. We're talking with Rich Paul and Chris Cantwell about hiring a hitman, and we'll talk to you as well. But first, ExpressCoin.com. ExpressCoin is the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies, Bitcoins, Litecoin, or Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They are a licensed money service business. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order or check. Just start off at ExpressCoin.com. Whether in the U.S. or Canada, it's ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading the app at 
ExpressCoin.com. Use coupon code FTL to get up to $40 worth of your cryptocurrency with no fee at all. ExpressCoin.com. Coupon code FTL. And we return to the phones and the fun. Virgil is on the line via Skype. Hey, Virgil. Good evening, Derek. It sounds like you, right? <laughs> this is Derek J. How are you? How are you? I'm fine. So I'm, I'm so happy to call in tonight. And I assume Christopher Canwell is there as well? I'm yes, with sir. you, Virgil. <laughs> so uh, last evening, and I think you may have been on the show last evening as well, if I'm not mistaken, Derek. Yes. Uh, a, guy, a guy called in and he said he was accused of being a misogynist. Do you remember that call? Yeah, yeah. And I thought he kind of was at the beginning, uh, but it, he had some good reasons. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. But I've been accused one as, uh, of being one as well in the last few days. Um, and I've, I've even been uh, compared to Christopher Canwell, apparently. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> it's, it's outrageous. And apparently Chris and I, we are destroying the movement. Uh, him and I, single-handedly. Well, well, welcome to the club. We've all been destroying the movement for a long time <laughs> together, and and we're we're glad to have you on board. <laughs> I'm so happy to be on board. But what what happened really quick? What transpired a few days ago? I authored an article called uh, 12 Reasons Why Libertarian Women Cannot Get a Good Libertarian Guy," and it was the title is inflammatory a little bit. I know, but I thought he was a fairly uh, you know half funny, half serious article. And it was mostly written in a response, as a response to uh, an article written by a self-labeled, uh, you know, feminist young lady, whom I'm actually in friendly terms with, we're friends. And uh, she thought it was funny, she didn't make any of it, but uh, anything of it, but apparently over the last few days it has developed into this mass hysteria in, in the movement. So I'm kind of calling to see, to take Chris's uh, thoughts on this. I'm just curious what he thinks, because well, I've been compared with him and now I kind of, you know, almost have to follow in his footsteps, footsteps, so. Well, you know, you had, uh, we had spoken about this on Facebook a little bit. You, you sent me some uh, some screenshots of people actually, like, implying that you should be killed for writing this. Oh, my. Uh, right. And uh, I got tagged in a post by a demo that uh, he was uh, getting unfriended and blocked by people for his mutual friendship with you and I. Uh, and it seems to me that these people <clears> – <throat> we are not ruining the movement, sir, okay? The, 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 the first <laughs> bullet point in your article was you're a feminist, was the reason that the women couldn't get a good libertarian guy, right? And that would do it. That is what's going to trigger the uh, the left wing entryists into this movement into a full on feeding frenzy to try to end your career. OK, because right. they have gone almost completely unimpeded throughout this entire thing. It's basically like me mauling you in the Mises Institute are the only people who are willing to contradict these freaking animals. Uh, and. When you're seeing what I've been seeing for quite a while is that they are vicious, dishonest people who will go out of their way to to slander anybody who challenges them. Right. That seems to be the case. And uh, and what happened uh, was and, and I and I, I think I've elevated trolling to a new level uh, a few days ago when I kind of fired myself. A lot of these people don't know that I actually am a proprietor at truthvoice.com, which is a website <laughs> I write for. So they were calling for me to get fired. So I posted a, a sort of a fake announcement that, uh, you know, my employment was terminated uh, due to the article uh, I authored. And uh, I, I kind of proceeded on taking screenshots of their reactions. And it was just absolutely hilarious. And these are people that some of them call themselves journalists. And they were so happy that I got uh, canned, supposedly, for writing this. It's, it was incredible. Wow, well, that's the market incredible. at work. Hey, what, Virgil, why do you feel you're qualified to write this article? <laughs> well, I, I do have a penis. I think, I think that's, that's uh, one, one thing that qualifies me. So I'm kind of writing from a male perspective. And then, uh, you know, I, I call myself a libertarian. But uh, I think these two things qualify me enough. And I, I have a very successful, long marriage I'm in. We are, we're very happy. My wife uh, you know, appreciated the article. She loved it. And uh, so I, I don't think I'm unqualified, uh, but uh, it's it's been a very interesting experience. And honestly, I think one reason that may have prompted this backlash is that I, I think the scope that I intended for the piece was for voluntarist circles. And once I started using the word libertarian, it kind of escaped that original scope uh, uh -oh. somewhat. Yeah, and it got into, you know, out there being read by anyone and everyone who calls, uh, you know, himself or herself a libertarian. So I think that's probably part of it. What's next for truthvoice.com? 
Well, I mean, I rehired myself. I doubled my salary. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the plan is to continue to partner up with Cop Block and push out stories and focus on police brutality stuff. And that's about it. Well, I, I I'm glad that you put the piece out there, Virgil, and uh, I, I haven't I haven't read uh, Avon's piece that you were responding to, but like I sort of took a look at her Facebook profile and realized, you know, she's putting out this rape culture nonsense and all of these things. It's oh, ridiculous, ridiculous nonsense ideas, and people need to stand up to these people, man. I'm telling you that they have gone completely unimpeded. They are taking over this movement. We are wrestling it back from them, and they are furious and they're fighting for their survival, and they're going to lose. Right, right. That seems to be the case. And actually, I want to. I, I wonder what uh, um, what Derek J thinks about this. And, and Rich Bolte, what do you guys think? Does this piece make me a, you know, does it make me a, a, a you know, a, a woman hater, a misogynist, or anything like that? What's what? What do you think? Well, I haven't read the uh, the piece, but I can tell you this: the people who use the word feminists come in two two different flavors. There are people who say, I'm a feminist because I believe that people should have equal rights. And there are female supremacists. The, the, the two are indistinguishable. I'm sorry. You can't I, have I, equal I, rights for the genders because they are completely different animals. They serve completely different functions. And all this egalitarian nonsense needs to get flushed down the toilet and leave skid okay, marks. Wait Tell a minute. Tell me this. Where should, <laughs> where should rights be different between the genders? This I this is interesting. They are going to, uh, in, in the marketplace, they are going to achieve completely different outcomes. They are going to play completely different roles. And people are going to hire them and want to do business with them and be in different relationships with them right. and things are going to be different based on their genders but and that so, doesn't mean that they have different rights they have exactly if you talk the same to them, rights no so so the, the i would tend to agree with you in the sense of that they have the exact same uh lack of authority to Life, initiate liberty, force, and the pursuit okay? of happiness are, are a pretty good statement of our rights well, they got all of them if their pursuit of happiness is to live life on the terms of being a man, well, then I'm sorry, you're not going to be happy. Well, you're not you going right to be happy. It's not going to happen. Not you know, if you want to go into, uh, you know, uh, uh, be a, a bricklayer, and the and the bricklaying company doesn't want to hire you because you're abroad, well, then get used to it. What do you think? Eight fifty five, four fifty free. I want to thank you for the call tonight, Virgil. Uh, thank you. Hang in there, you misogynist. <laughs> this is free talk live. <laughs> do that to him as you hang up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get the last word, so I can do that. Chris Cantwell. Firing up the studio tonight. 855 450 free. So we decided to upgrade the look of our home. You know, improve the curve appeal. We decided to add the look of stone to the exterior. We really like the stacked stone look. Yeah, but when I checked into the price, it was ridiculous. No way could we afford it. Then a friend told me about Genstone. G-E-N-S-T-O-N-E. Genstone comes in lightweight panels made of polyurethane. They've actually engineered the hassle out of installation. No mortar, no mesh. It was easy. Even I could do it. We just screwed the panels to the wall and it looks like stone. I mean, it really looks like stone. Yeah, from the box to the wall in minutes. We love the look of our home now. And Genstone is durable, comes with a 25-year warranty, and offers additional R-value for insulation. If you want the look of stone at a price you can afford, call Genstone. At 855-955-STONE. Trust me, you'll save money. And you'll love the look. 855-955-STONE. That's 855 855- Five five nine five five seventy eight sixty six. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'd rather keep their clients in the dark. There are too many lawyer jokes to count. 
However, there are some lawyers with more noble intentions. At the Institute for Justice, we bring the light to our clients. We are a nonprofit public interest law firm with clear values and principles. At IJ, we fight for those whose most basic rights are denied by the government. Visit our website today at ij.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. You can call in and talk about anything. That's why we call it Free Talk Live. It's Derek J here in studio with you. Rich Paul and Cantwell, and we're talking about bigotry, feminism, how to get libertarians to date you, and other things. Uh, but first, Pocket Power Plus. We use battery power on so many things these days, it's hard to keep track. Well, there's a new device that will help you keep your battery-powered devices up and running. It's a source of backup power, so small that you can put it in your pocket or glove box in the car. But it's so powerful that in some circumstances, it can actually jump start a car. Sounds crazy, but it's not. I'm talking about a breakthrough in portable technology called Pocket Power Plus. If you get stranded in an airport, in your car, or you just want to go off the grid for a while, the Pocket Power Plus becomes your own personal mini power plant. Run electronic devices for hours, even days if you need to. The Pocket Power Plus can also deliver an enormous supply of on-demand power. It has a full accessory pack with most adapters that you'll need, including jumper cables. Best part? Free Talk Live listeners can now get Pocket Power Plus for half price. By going to PocketPowerPlus9.com. That's PocketPowerPlus9.com. Use coupon code FTL to save even more. Go to PocketPowerPlus9.com. That's PocketPowerPlus9.com. And we return. We started off the show talking about the 420 rally that happened in Concord, New Hampshire, the state's capital, right on the state house lawn. In fact, on the very steps of the building, just inches away from the front door, you, Rich Paul, are the man who founded this event and helped kick it off again this year. Um, you were telling us a little bit about what it was like. Go on. Uh, were you giving speeches? Were there uh, people selling brownies? What was going on there? Well, I wasn't able to attend. There were uh, several speeches going going on. We showed up uh, probably about 40 minutes before the event was uh, scheduled to start, as is uh, traditional. And actually, I made the Facebook event last year for 420, and this year I've made it for 320. Uh, to reflect that a lot of us do show up early and uh, get a head start going. Cool. Um, but uh, so we showed up, and first I just smoked out with a lot of the people I've been interacting with online, 
And then uh, I'm curious, like, uh, what method you guys use? Were you passing around bongs here, or was this uh, um, joints only? Well, what I encourage people to do is to bring joints as much as possible, because if somebody's holding that, and say the police did show up and uh, decide they were they wanted to arrest people with weed, it's very easy to eat a joint. Uh, not so easy to eat a bowl. So. <laughs> um, so I I do suggest that people bring joints whenever uh, possible. But some people who I guess didn't mind uh, the risk of getting arrested or didn't expect the police to show up uh, were out there with uh, with bowls. Um, what was the police presence like? Were they there? Uh, the police presence was absence. The best kind of police presence. Now there because- was uh, one state trooper did pull up uh, just after four twenty, and he was just sitting in his car. He didn't come after us or anything though. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really consider him present at the uh, rally, though he right. was present at the state house. Yeah, like he wasn't standing around among the uh, clouds of cannabis smoke. No, no. Uh, we did have a couple of uh, state reps out there. Wow. Um, Represent. Kyle, yeah, Kyle Tasker was out there, uh, Republican, and uh, I don't know the other name. The name of the other. Uh, there are so many state reps in New Hampshire. Do you remember who the other uh, rep was? I did not catch. Uh, the only rep that I noticed with that was out there was Tasker, and I and I actually went. I was like, hey, you know, uh, it's cool that you're out here. You're a state rep. You mind talking to me on camera? And he looks at me with like bloodshot eyes and says. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be on camera right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people knew I there were going to be. Her. <laughs> he's great, and he's spoken to the uh, state government on behalf of this issue of uh, cannabis legalization, or more specifically, repeal of prohibition. Perhaps I should say, Rich. Mm-hmm. Um, this uh, Kyle Tasker has really put himself out there. He even brought what appeared to be cannabis right to the state house while speaking to some of these. Uh, state reps so just an inspirational uh, person and it's one of those things that i really think is only happening in new hampshire i'm from philadelphia Mm. and there are a lot of cannabis activists who are working to end prohibition there but i don't see state reps openly smoking pot in front of the place of their employ well outside new hampshire you don't see that many anarchists and uh in the state house at all so that might be part of it <laughs> the, the new hampshire legislature is like the most unique thing it's, it's so funny to me i've been going there and it it, it caused me to rethink a, a lot of things that i sort of held uh, pretty solidly for a long time like the the pointlessness of political action for a long time i just said hey no point in even trying to negotiate with the terrorists don't go to the state house don't talk to your state reps don't vote don't participate in elections but now why you know, is that why did you hold that position I mean, it's something that it's it's sort of a dogma that goes around in ANCAP circles, right? It's yeah. a, why would you vote? Voting is violence. Voting just perpetuates faith in the system, this sort of thing, right? Uh, yeah, but that seems more theoretical. You're, now you're, you're, you're the asking for your freedom. You're begging your slave master. You know, this sort of thing is pitched around a lot. Oh, when yeah. I, People when, tell me I'm perpetuating the system by... By casting a vote, I'm like, look, if they told me you don't vote, we're going to shut it down. You wouldn't be able to get me near that voting booth. <laughs> but they don't care if yeah. I if I vote or not. But some people do care to see the libertarian vote total high. Some people do care to see that growing every year and and to say, hey, there are more people coming to, to agree with us over time. And I think that's I think it's an important um, statistically, if nothing else, to have a lot of people go out and place a vote for no more. And as a matter of fact, less government. I would vote to repeal prohibition if that were on the table. Absolutely. Me, too. Uh, Certainly. I mean, I went up and testified on a bill just to decrim. Right. I mean, just to reduce the penalties for it. I'm like, if I can, you know, participate in something to get some harm reduction in here, then then let's do that. And it does look like that's going to pass. Marijuana decriminalization. It's not a repeal of the drug war or anything like that, but it is a it's a it's a harm reduction uh, tactic that I do think is going to pass in New Hampshire, mm-hmm. uh, and there's all all types of other things that I do think are going to pass that I've spoken at on, on at the state house, and uh, when I saw in New Hampshire when I saw. Uh, political activity actually making a difference, actually reducing the size and scope of government, people with uh, real principles getting elected in this place. I said, well, I guess, you know, the information has changed. I've got to change my opinion. So mm-hmm. were you pleased with the overall outcome of the event, Rich? Um, Prohibition was, hasn't ended, by the I, way. 
I was very pleased. You know, we got into the Concord Monitor. More people know oh, really? we're out there. They had, uh, what's the new TV news station? NH1. And it, yeah, they were out there um, for a while filming. So, you know, we got a lot of exposure for the issue, and I very much uh, enjoyed being out there. And let me tell you something about decriminalization. It's very near to my and dear to my heart, even though it's not full legalization, and here's why. I have suspended sentences. Those suspended sentences will not be imposed based mm. on a civil infraction or here they call it a violation but they would be imposed if I got a misdemeanor pot conviction. So even the change of decriminalization of basic uh, of of simple possession can keep prevent people cons- from spending years in prison. If I'd been arrested today, I could have done up to five and a half years if they decided, you know, for for simple possession based on my uh, my suspended sentences. Well, there are many Americans out there who smoke cannabis on a regular basis, but they have to hide it because mm-hmm. they're afraid of what would happen to them if they were caught by the government. Yeah. <laughs> so um, and I, I want to hear from those people. Our number is 855-450-FREE. When we return, Willie Nelson is getting in the pot game. Oh, he's been in the pot game for a long time, <laughs> but now he's saying, you should buy my weed. We'll hear from that story at Rolling Stone. 855 450 free. Do you support prohibition? Do you think peaceful pot smokers belong in jail? Tell us why. His hair was falling out in clumps. Our golden retriever, Sundance, he scratched incessantly. Mounds and mounds of fur all over the place. Our hairballs have hairballs. Olive was suffering like a dog. She was itching, she was scratching, she was licking 24 hours a day. Just chewing and chewing and chewing. So. Scratching and, and biting. Buddy, my shih tzu's itching problem, constantly licking his feet. It keeps me up at night. And all it took was one container of Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acid. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa, the digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. The shedding slowed down to almost none. The scratching went away after a few days. Tons of energy, no more bad smells. The shedding has stopped and the itching has stopped. Sleep at night. Oh, let me do it again. Sleep at night. Get your dog some Dynavite. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Wall and Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Wall and Associates. It's at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenevention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenevention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenevention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenevention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Hiring a hitman. Gender inequality. Or just enjoying 420. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in and talk about anything you want. Our number is 855-450-FREE, and it is toll-free. You can also Skype into the show by dialing lrn.fm, and you'll sound better that way. Hey, we've been talking a lot about cannabis, and boy, do I love to enjoy some cannabis at the end of the night, but you know what else I love is wine. (laughs) I love a good glass of wine in the evening, and... I've just had some terrific wine from Cameron Hughes. We did a taste test here at the Free Talk Live studios a couple of weeks ago, and then again this week, and had some Cabernet Sauvignon that was delicious, some Pinot Noir that blew me away, truly. And there is a special exclusive offer just for Free Talk Live listeners that you can get free shipping. On wine. Now, shipping wine can be pretty expensive, as you can imagine. Yeah, wine is heavy stuff. (laughs) But this is some of the highest quality wine from the best vineyards in the world shipped to you for a much reduced price because they are rebottled, slapped a new label on, says Cameron Hughes, and you get the reduced price. Yeah, I I had uh, tried some of it in the studio here, and I forget exactly what I had, but I, I just had to remark <laughs> that it tastes like a quality wine. Like I'm mm-hmm. I am not usually a quality wine buyer, and I do enjoy me some wine, but I'm also a cheapskate, and so I go to the supermarket and I get these boxes of wine, and you know, uh, and it's not the most highest of quality stuff. And the, the Cameron Hughes wine that I tried in here was delicious, and uh, well, and- now it's going to change your life. Because you can get free shipping and up to 20% off. Here's how you do it. Go to chwine.com. Click on the microphone in the upper left-hand corner and enter code FTL. That's code FTL as in Free Talk Live. chwine.com. Go to the microphone and enter Free Talk Live to get free shipping and 20% off. Don't wait. You need to try this wine now. It's amazing, and this offer won't last. Of course it won't last. How can you ship wine for free? I, we had this guy on the show, and I'm like, you're going to go out of business. Don't do it. it. It does sound crazy to me, but I have had some, and I want some more. So that's what I'll be doing. Uh, let's get back into this story that I teased before the break. Willie Nelson, why you should buy my weed. This article from Rolling Stone published yesterday, 420. I'll never smoke reefer with Willie again. (laughs) Smoking (laughs) Willie Nelson's weed is a lifelong ambition of stoners everywhere, enjoyed only by a few lucky fans and friends like Snoop Dogg and Merle Haggard. Not anymore, though. On Monday, Nelson announced his own cannabis company, Willie's Reserve, (laughs) which will bring Willie's weed to the masses. The product will be grown and sold. This is not a a paid advertisement, by the way. This is just an article that I'm reading from Rolling Stone. It's it's starting to sound like one. The product will be grown and sold by local businesses in Colorado and Washington uh, and more as state regulation allows. 
Rolling Stone recently caught up with Nelson on his bus backstage near San Antonio, Texas. Use our code FTL to get free shipping. <laughs> <laughs> One day. Wouldn't that be amazing? We should team up with Willie oh, if we can. I definitely. Love it. Mark Edge needs to call this dude yeah, get and on it. sell him some advertising. I'll make sure it's good or it won't be on sale, he says. <laughs> Uh, there should be a menu, just like in restaurants, because there's so many different kinds of pot that do so many different things. It's a good idea to have everything labeled for what it does, what it uh, what it don't do, and how powerful it is. What is it? So what it does? Does it open jars? Does it climb ladders? Does it fix <laughs> the clean gutters? It what are you talking about? It opens the doors of perception, bro, mm. if you do it right. Can you elaborate uh, for us, Rich? You're a sort of a... a cannabis connoisseur could you tell us what are some of the different things that cannabis would do for those uninitiated well um in my experience it turns down uh, or turns up the gain somewhat on my pattern recognition software i think of my own brain like a computer program because i'm a programmer okay but it which causes me to recognize patterns I wouldn't uh, other not otherwise recognize. Sometimes that's good and sometimes it's bad. Yeah, I if think you, that's what happened to Alex Jones. Well, yeah, <laughs> if you and and that's what I was gonna say is if you recognize patterns you wouldn't uh, otherwise recognize, that can lead to paranoia. So you have to have to check your conclusions there. But it can also lead to flights of intuition that you might not have otherwise made. It's like my understanding of economics has really deepened from listening uh, to different kinds of economics well high and just kind of um, relaxing and almost meditating on what I'm hearing. Well, I think that Willie is, is talking about something a little different. I think he's sort of talking about, uh, he says, it's a good idea to have everything labeled for what it does, what it don't do, and how powerful it is. He sort of sounds like he's sort of talking about the difference between beer, wine, and hard liquor. You know, where okay. you would have the different strains, and mm -hmm. uh, these would each do different things. There's also sativas and um, indicas, and they yeah. have different effects as well. You don't want to be... Yeah. Each strain is going to be a certain percentage sativa and a certain percentage um, indica. And so, and I and these guess are, that's, are are these types of the cannabis plant? Uh, yeah, it's it's types of plant, and I really don't know if they're. I guess they can't be different species because they right. can mate with each other. But then there are different uh, types as well. Like within a sativa, there might be different kinds uh, that I would compare to like different beer types there's porters there's stouts and uh, similarly there's white widow or there's you know um afghan kush there's all these different types and it's not that they're brand names they're not particular brands that come from a one particular source they're they're strains they're types uh, like mm -hmm. a porter is a darker beer and a stout is as well when i when i hear him say IPA. what it do and what it don't do i'm just picturing like infomercials where like normal everyday <laughs> tasks look incredibly difficult and all of a sudden you get willie's yeah. weed and they become really easy you know? yeah are you bored at work <laughs> <laughs> Nelson says the business will also include stores with menus of products and edibles. Quote, it fell together like evolution wants it to, Nelson says. It's just a matter of time in this country before it's legal. I feel like I bought so much, it's time to start selling it back. <laughs> he's, trying to, he's trying to cover like cover his expenses now. He's like, I gotta sell weed to make up for all this money I spend on it. Oh, Works come on, he's me. on tour. <laughs> he's doing fine. Um, you know, I heard that Willie Nelson, I don't know if it's in this article, but he allegedly smoked a cannabis on the White House rooftop while Carter was president. I don't know if that's true, but that's the story, so it goes. I would love to have been a fly on the wall with Carter and Willie. If smoking. only we had Wouldn't used during the Will Carter the administration. I know, right? Or our little drone video cameras where you can <laughs> zoom in on them. The singer said in a statement that Willie's reserve, quote, is an extension of my passion and appreciation for the many varieties and range of the plant's qualities. Some of the best master growers in America will collaborate to define quality standards so that fans can expect clean and consistent products. 
you know, that's really cool because there are plenty of growers out in the world, uh, especially who are getting professional jobs out in California, Washington, Colorado, some of the places where it's more legal. And they're going to flock to things like Willie's Weed. I mean, isn't it obvious? It's like the Microsoft or the Google of weed. You would you would say like, OK, I want to work for this company. They're going to be the best. I don't know if I want to turn the weed dealer into Microsoft or Google. There'll be spyware in your bowl and <laughs> all types of terrible things. Yeah, Willie's not going to do that. Nelson uh, has been an advocate for legalization and has been involved with the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws, or NORML, for decades. Well, come on, Willie. Speed things up a little. You've been doing it for decades. <laughs> he, say, he talks about cannabis legalization like it's an inevitability, and I disagree with him there. I mean, it's been going on for how many decades? And he, he talks about uh, legalization. I made this point yesterday. I'm still waiting for alcohol prohibition to end. There are still restrictions on when I can buy alcohol from the store and, and who I can buy it from and what age I have to be. And all of these restrictions, you know, what, how does the government have the right to determine these things? When we had Cameron Hughes on the show, he was discussing all of the lunatic things that he has to go through just to ship wine throughout this country. And I'm sure it's, it's crazy. We ship to 50 different countries called the United States. Like every state has its own restrictions, what oh, you yeah. can send, how much you can send. It's so, so ridiculous. Well, then again, I would say that's better than the alternative of having the federal government impose those uh, those standards. It's better not to have uh, government imposed standards in the first place, but I would rather see federalism than uh, in the sense of letting the states do it their own way than having the federal government impose one rule on all. I don't, I don't entirely disagree with that, but if the federal government decide to forbade state governments from regulating liquor sales, I would get over that. Um, if they forbade it entirely and failed to do it themselves, then yes, I would say that's a win. Um, what do you think? When will alcohol prohibition end? This is Free Talk Live, 855 450 free. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, April 21st, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.16 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,201 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $226. 
Antiwar.com reports at least 46 people are dead and several hundred others wounded after Saudi warplanes launched attacks on the outskirts of a missile depot in the Yemeni capital city of Sana'a yesterday. No military casualties were reported in the strike, which set off a string of explosions around residential neighborhoods in Sana'a. Many of the casualties were from explosions blowing out windows in people's homes. Saudi officials defended the huge civilian death toll, insisting the fact that their airstrikes on a known missile depot had caused explosions explosions at all proved the Houthis had been storing their own small arms in the area. Saudi military spokesman Brigadier General Ahmed Asseri went on to say that yesterday's strikes were part of a new phase of a war against the Houthis, one which he insisted would include protection of civilians. So far, the phase seems not to be off to a great start. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a commercial chicken facility in Iowa is euthanizing 5.3 million hens after bird flu was detected. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service Laboratories in Ames, Iowa conducted tests on the animals after the Osceola County facility experienced an uptick in deaths among its flock. The chickens tested positive for H5N2 avian influenza, which is considered high pathogenic in birds. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says it is rare for humans to contract the class of influenza in which H5N2 falls. Though no human infection of the virus has ever been recorded, the recent uptick in U.S. cases in chickens and turkeys could lead to a human infection. The Iowa Department of Agriculture said all hens at the Iowa facility were quarantined and were scheduled to be euthanized, adding that people should avoid contact with sick-slash-dead poultry or wildlife. If contact occurs, wash your hands with soap and water and change clothing before having any contact with healthy domestic poultry and birds. In March, the same strain of avian flu was responsible for killing 15,000 turkeys in Minnesota and sickening 40,000 turkeys in Arkansas. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. Reuters reports a Utah mother who pled guilty to murdering six of her newborn infants over the course of a decade was sentenced on Monday to between 15 years to life in prison. Megan Huntsman confessed to suffocating or strangling babies while she suffered from methamphetamine and alcohol addiction. The remains of the six infants were found in April 2014 wrapped in old towels, shirts, and plastic bags inside boxes in the garage of her home about 40 miles north of Provo. The body of a seventh infant was discovered disposed in the the same way, but authorities have said they believe that child to be stillborn. Police have said Huntsman secretly gave birth to all seven without medical assistance at the house after apparently managing to conceal her pregnancies from the outside world. The case of serial infanticide came to light when Huntsman's estranged husband, Darren West, later confirmed by DNA tests to have fathered all of the victims, stumbled on one of the tiny bodies while cleaning out the garage and notified authorities. Neither West nor any of Huntsman's three surviving daughters daughters aged 14, 18, and 20 at the time of her arrest was considered a suspect. At least one of the three, the youngest, was born during the period of time in which her sibling infants were slain. Huntsman was not eligible for the death penalty because the murders, which took place between 1996 and 2006, predate changes in the law that would have made the offense a capital crime in Utah. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The Relationship Pro talks to your girlfriend so you don't have to. 
We're joined today in our demo center by Eric and Pam, a couple that's been teetering on the edge of divorce for years. So, Pam, you guys have been using the controller all morning. I understand it's a very good listener. It's like talking to a fully developed person. It's got to be a major relief not needing your husband to be your partner or a friend. Oh, yes. So, Eric, it must be a, a tremendous relief to know that there's someone else on the other end of Pam's eye rolls. Oh. Now I can focus on my game instead of worrying about all that stuff she said there. Will the relationship pro keep you two together? I think it'll drag this thing out for another couple months. Amazing. Now, to thank you two for coming on the show, we bought you two the new Deluxe Relationship Pro Extreme. This expanded model has two new modes. Fantasy mode, which allows you to select the age and nationality of the controller's voice. Oh, I choose a voice like my dad's. OK. And a hyper-realistic mode that starts fights and then grovels pathetically when it's afraid you might get rid of it. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE is the toll-free call-in line. Or send us a message on Skype. You can dial in that way. Username is lrn.fm, and you'll usually sound better that way. We're talking about Willie Nelson and, and why he thinks you should buy his weed. We've also discussed tonight gender inequality, hiring a hitman, and 420 at the State House. All that and more, plus, of course, your calls in studio tonight. It's me, Derek J. Rich Paul. And Christopher Cantwell will join us in just seconds as he returns. He, uh, Willie Nelson. We were talking about him in the last segment. He was arrested. You should know a thing or two about this, R Rich. He was arrested as recently as 2010 when he memorably created the Teapot Party. Mm-hmm. They mostly want autographs now, Nelson says of police officers. They really don't bother me much anymore for the weed, because you can bust me now and I'll pay my fine or go to jail, get out and burn one on the way home. They know they're not stopping me. Yeah, that's pretty much, I think, the conclusion they've come to with me. Uh, you know, when they, when they finally terminated my probation, my... Uh, Probation officer just said, look, he's not going to smoke weed no matter what we tell him, or he's not going to stop smoking weed no matter what we tell him. So just throw him in jail for a little while and then terminate his probation. Have you been arrested for cannabis possession, Christopher Cantwell? Um, no. I, I got charged with marijuana possession when I was arrested for something else once, but I've never been arrested just for uh, for cannabis possession. Oh, okay. So yeah. But you did get that charge. Yeah, I was a charge of Something possession Something we all share. We all have that in common tonight. And so. It's amazing that I don't have more drug arrests. <laughs> uh, and so we also share this with Willie Nelson. So um, we return to the story from Rolling Stone. I forgot to mention, Christopher Cantwell, that you have a very special blog. I do, ChristopherCantwell.com, and... Uh, it's uh, it's quite the it's been something of a source of controversy over the course of time. We're having a lot of fun over there. I'm actually going through a little bit of a a rebranding. I used to say at the top of the website it used to see anarchist atheist expletive, but now it says uh, anarchist atheist evolutionist. So I'm, I'm I'm changing things around a little bit to sort of make it more palatable towards the out, outward marketing but it's mm. just as are you it's, going soft on us the content is just as controversial <laughs> if not more i also changed the name of my podcast i do a i do a show at least every friday uh, i used to call it some garbage podcast the show is now titled radical agenda yeah yeah i don't trust a podcast called some garbage podcast produced by a man who wears a polo well it was interesting like i felt like an idiot i actually got walter williams on as a guest and i don't know how if you guys are familiar yeah. with you know he's a pretty big name guest and then i'm introducing him on the program and i'm realizing that i'm introducing walter williams and telling them that he's on some garbage podcast and i felt like an idiot and so <laughs> yeah I, I changed the name of the program did you but, consider uh anarchist atheist uh idiot uh, you know, I mean, no. <laughs> Most people are polite enough. They're just going to let it go. But uh, I agree. It sounds nice to rebrand, uh, add a little flair to your... Right. And, and you know, I, and, and the thing was like... Uh, 
the, when I started some garbage podcast, I started it with my my business partner Eddie in New York, and and it was garbage at first. Right, like the first episode of <laughs> okay. it was like we didn't even have microphones. It was just like you hear us talk through the camera microphone halfway across the room. It was ridiculous. We had no idea what we were doing, and so now I've actually got like a mixer and microphones and like a halfway decent you know uh, studio apparatus, and so uh, it's it's a uh, we've been doing a little less garbage each time, and now it's just the radical agenda. No garbage here. This is free talk live you can dial in 855 450 free is the toll-free call in line back to the story from rolling stone willie nelson says that his new company willie's reserve remember these are these he's going to sell pot will emphasize environmental and social issues to quote support the gradual end of marijuana prohibition across america why gradual why support a gradual end? Let's support an abrupt end to marijuana prohibition. <laughs> Seeing the power of legalization, regulation, and taxation to mm. impact how Americans view cannabis is a life's work, realized for Willie. Willie, a rep for the singer, said in a statement, Ew, that statement makes me squirm. You? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Um, Just, well, throwing taxation into one of the... Uh, one of the things he's going for, I don't like taxation. And what about regulation? And regulation, yeah. Boo! Yeah, the market can regulate itself just fine. Yeah. Um, I am looking forward to working with the best growers in Colorado and Washington to make sure our product is the best on the market, Nelson added. The singer is also teamed with friend Merle Haggard for the pro marijuana video, It's All Going to Pot which premiered Monday on Conan O'Brien's website. So, uh, you know, the links are at Rolling Stone, and you can uh, find more on this story at freetalklive.com. In fact, that's where you can go to submit articles that we talk about here on the show. If you'd like, go to freetalklive.com, and you can submit articles about just about anything. And then uh, users vote on what they like the best. That moves to the top. And this was indeed at the top of the page today on Free Talk Live, uh, just published hours ago. So very exciting. I'd like to come back to uh, equal rights also, uh, because the the one thing that we missed that I wanted to say is that <laughs> unequal results are the result of a uh, can be the results of applying equal justice to unequal people. People hmm. are not equally tall. They are not equally smart. They are not equally strong. And so if you apply equal justice to, to unequal people, you will get unequal results. Uh, the only way to like get... Like what's an example? Uh, an example is that um, someone who is weaker... Uh, is not going to be able to move as much stuff if they work in a thrift store. And therefore, they may not be as worth as much money to the guy, to the owner as somebody who can move more stuff. And, yes. you know, to me, that's what matters is how much stuff can you move. I don't care what's dangling between your legs. You know, if a skinny little guy comes in and a big tough woman comes in, Mm -hmm. And I want to move a lot of stuff. I might hire the big, tough woman. But then again, on average, men are stronger than women. And what if you're what if you're just the you know the HR director for the firm, and you see uh, and you see a woman's resume on your desk, and you just say, you know, this probably isn't a job for a woman, and you just skip it because it's a female first name. You see, I would not bother doing that. I would. That doesn't seem right. To Why? me, it, to me, it doesn't. It it doesn't matter. I mean, I want to know how much you can lift. Not you know who. Like, but, but don't you have some reasonable expectation between your legs? Are you going to go out of your way to go to like extra effort just to try to you know apply things equally? I mean, no. why would I? Why no, would I? I, I don't, don't, don't have I have a reason a, to worry about? Don't the I have gender. some reasonable expectation that men are going to be certain uh, capable, more capable of certain things than women? Even if I'm talking about, uh, you, you know, don't know that until you give I'm them an interview. Average, okay, but, you've got resumes on your desk. Presumably, if it's for a job that requires heavy lifting, she's got information about how much she can lift. So that's what you determine it based on, not her name. Yeah, that's what matters to me. How much can you lift? 
Well, uh, but uh, let's say uh, there's a, a job that requires um, an extraordinarily high IQ, right? Now, if yeah. we look at uh, IQs across the genders, women, oh God. G- women tend to be more in the middle and men are in the lower and very high ranges, okay. right? You look at like a bell curve of IQ and it's crazy to I'm look at. I'm afraid of where you're this? going here. Well, I'm saying, let's say, uh, do, do people complain when the when this whole shirt storm thing went off, right? What's the, that? The, uh, the the European st- Space Agency, when the guy, um, I forget, his name escapes me, but the, the, when they landed the the rocket on the comet, and this guy had the, the, the shirt with oh, the pictures yeah. of the women on it, and all the feminists freaked out and said, this is why women aren't in the engineering. And, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I'm like, no, oh, it's because please. these are geniuses, and you don't tend to fall into that category. Okay. Right, the IQ range is but a fig- thing that you can figure out when you look at it. Right, there so, are female geniuses though. So who wants to waste a genius because she doesn't have the right stuff between yeah. her legs? That's I from agree a, from a from a society wide perspective. That's a crazy thing to do, and it's not good for the individual either. Yeah, go for the qualifications. What do you think? You can dial in, take Chris Cantwell to task. Tell him do how it. wrong he is. Give me a chance. <laughs> 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Or Skype us, lrn.fm. Are you completely free of stress and fatigue? Well, of course not. You aren't alone, though. Now think about how nice it would be to begin relieving some of that stress and fatigue. Let me introduce you to a product that has and is working for me. It's called Youthful Greens. Youthful Greens. It's packed full of nature's nourishing, cleansing, and alkalizing greens, providing a powerful dose of whole food nutrition in each serving. Youthful Greens helps increase overall energy levels and reduce all that fatigue and stress on your body. And right now, when you visit freegreens.net or call 800-333-6923 and order your one-month supply of Youthful Greens for only $29.95, you get another month's supply for free. That's two months of Youthful Greens for the already low price of just $29.95, plus free shipping. That's saving you $45. Visit freegreens.net today or simply call 800-333-6923. And hey, you're welcome. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. All experts agreed this week that the dying U.S. economy is no reason at all to stop investing in print media. Calling the newspaper and magazine industry a veritable cash cow with massive potential for growth, top experts everywhere said that aggressive investment in print media will pay off in spades and that newsprint is in no way threatened by internet news sites or online video content. Besides, everyone in the know agreed, loyal readers of newspapers would never, ever in a million years turn their back on the trusted print media industry that has always been there for them in good times and bad. This is the Onion News Network. It's the Onion Radio News. I'm Doyle Redland. Cardiologists announced today that test subjects who took a single aspirin tablet followed by a fifth of bonded Kentucky bourbon were 85% less likely to realize they were having a heart attack. Potential side effects for the new treatment include slurred speech, impaired vision, and vomiting. Doyle Redland for the Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. 
if there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE or lrn.fm on Skype. We were just talking about ending prohibition, cannabis prohibition, and alcohol. Willie Nelson and his own reserve of cannabis. And now I turn to a story from the Huffington Post. Get this, guys. Conservative lawyer Gene Scher argues that marriage equality will lead to a spike in abortion rates. This from the Huffington Post. Can you yeah. believe it? Well, you know, there's this there's this thing within the gay community that I think is really unfortunate of all these, you know, irresponsible pregnancies going on. It needs to stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of course, uh, the, the we in the studio includes tonight me, Derek J. Rich Paul. And Cantwell. A conservative Washington, D.C.-based attorney is making headlines after linking same-sex marriage to abortion rates in a bizarre blog post. Gene Scher, who specializes in constitutional and appellate litigation, is perhaps best known for defending same-sex marriage ban in Utah and Idaho and is a former clerk to U.S. Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia. Now, as the Washington Post points out, he's filed an amicus brief on behalf of 100 scholars of marriage, asking the Supreme Court not to recognize same-sex marriage as a constitutional right. Do you agree with him? Well, I don't, I don't see marriage anywhere in the Constitution, so I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know where he comes up with that. But uh, I don't like this guy, but I agree with him. Yeah, I, I don't... I. Uh, no, wait, I don't, you agree that there will be more abortions? No, 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 no. I agree that uh, same-sex <laughs> marriage is not a constitutional right. Yeah, and and, it, and the fact I of the matter is, I don't think... agree, because the 14th Amendment says equal protection under the law. But what does the law have to do with marriage? And me. Well, okay, marriage, there should be a separation of marriage and state. Let me say that. I would love to see governments completely stop performing marriage and let churches perform marriages because, you know, it seems like if it exists, it should be a religious thing, not a government thing. But the reality is so long as government is uh, is performing marriages, they have an obligation under the Constitution to treat each and every person as the same. I don't I don't agree with that. I, I don't I that that. D- Equal protection under the law does not mean that you have to uh, go in. Uh, I, I don't. I don't see how you draw that distinction there. It just doesn't mean. I don't even know how to respond to it because it doesn't seem to make any sense to me. Well, if straight people can get married, gay people should be. Well, able if to they're get they're married. saying we're issuing marriage licenses and we see marriage as a thing between a man and a woman, right? Which look, look, I, I have no problem. Anybody well, wants to enter church... into any number of different types of contracts, they're more than welcome to do that, right? But I don't, if somebody says, well, I think marriage is a thing between a man and a woman, I don't think it's the most unreasonable thing for a person to say, right? So if that's what they see a marriage as, and that's what they're issuing marriage license licenses for, then, you know, then fine. Well, it's not people, but governments that issue marriage licenses. And I do believe that governments have a, uh, have a duty to stay out of that kind of thing. I do think they have a duty to stay out of it, but that's not what gay marriage proposes, is it? Gay marriage proposes removing one distinction that makes one group of people different from another people, group of people under the law for no justifiable or or uh, or 
uh, logical what? reason. Why Why would we want to punish gay people with marriage licenses? I don't think men should be marrying women at this point in America. Why they would want to start marrying each other, I don't understand. Marriage is gay like not even a good deal. They a right screw you to over. Be just as it's, miserable as straight people. They, got. They, <laughs> they sure do, and they can be as miserable as they want without the intervention of the state. So I don't understand why the push for marriage, gay marriage, okay? If you want to repeal marriage licenses, I'll get on board with that. I'll say, get out of marriage, government. I'll do that all day long. I am not getting on board with the gay marriage thing. I'm not doing it. Uh, I I will get on board with removing any injustice that I can from the law. And yes, would I rather have the government completely stop performing marriages? Absolutely. I would rather you come to the Church of the Invisible Hand and let me marry you because I will marry you to a man. I will marry you to two men. I will marry you to two men and three women. What about I will dogs? Marry any, I will not marry you to a dog, but I will marry you Why to not? a tree. That's because so so because I was in a jail with a guy who did his dog and he just creeped me out and I don't want any you're part such a of big oh, so because so, so because you got creeped out by a thing, that's not a marriage, Rich. Well, that's such a so bigoted no, no, that I I can't believe that, that you would exercise such an arbitrary authority over somebody's voluntary relationship with their own property. You know, a man the, has every right to marry his dog. I just ain't <laughs> going to do the deed. Um, Fair you enough. know, I don't I don't want to see it. I don't want to know about it. And by You're the discriminating, same token, Rich. yes, I am. And I'm discriminating according to my own taste. If a man refuses to uh, to bake a wedding cake for a gay marriage, he too is within his rights. No one should ever be forced to bake a cake that they don't want to bake because that strategy, uh, that slavery, I mean, and I don't care why they don't want to bake that. What if cake. I wanted to marry my sex toy? Can I can I come to the Church of Invis the Invisible Hand and get get married to my uh, my? Uh, uh, I don't want to get into. Too much detail. Let's not get specific, <laughs> normally, but let's go. Normally, we will not marry a man to his sex uh, sex toys, but we will make a uh, special dispensation for those who can't do better at the appropriate price. So come to me for counseling, my son. It will get interesting <laughs> as those like cyborgs <laughs> and robots uh, become a little more authentic. Let's say uh, in the future years, will people start marrying their sex toys? Let's. Ask. Beats marrying a feminist. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to James is calling in Michigan. What's going on in your mind, James? Well, um, well first off, uh, thanks for having me. And I just wanted to uh, touch on the, uh, what was referred to as the separation of, of marriage and, and state. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been saying for many, many years that... Um, I believe that the government should not have the right to say who got married. That's a personal decision and should be a religious decision. But I, I do have a question um, as far as a possible uh, solution. Go ahead. Um, my my best friend and uh, his wife are both atheists, don't associate with any um, – well, with, with any uh, religion – and so when they got married, they actually went to the justice of the peace. Um, do you think that maybe there, uh, in that instance, could be like mediators or something out there, um, you know, in a free society to, uh, you know, help them make their bond? I, if I were the International Association of Atheists, I would demand the right to uh, to perform marriages and let them have whatever rules they they so desire for for their brand of marriages. And if somebody doesn't like those rules, they can show, they can uh, form another voluntary association and issue marriages with a completely different set of rules. Isn't there a church out there, the Universal Life Church or something, that just gives away uh, degrees? or diplomas, whatever it's called. Oh, I'm an, or I'm an ordained minister in the Church of Spiritual Humanism. <laughs> so could you mm -hmm. perform a marriage for these atheists? Theoretically, yeah. Well, there's your answer, James. What about that? All right, and, and uh, all right, so is, would that be the same solution for same-sex couples? I mean, I probably should have asked my brother. My brother and his, his husband live in a place that um, really is not friendly to same-sex couples, and they went out east to get married. The issue at hand is that the law does not recognize the union. Yeah, hang on the line, James. Uh, I'd like to bring you back to discuss this more. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. What do you think? 
Registered pharmacist Ben Fuchs ensures he gets the best use of his mineral supplements by using Longevity's Ultimate Enzymes. If you start a nutritional supplement program and you find that you get loose stools more than you get any benefits from the supplements, there's a good chance that you're not absorbing the minerals. Now, here's the thing about minerals and mineral absorption. You need to have a functioning fat system. You need to have functioning bile. You need to have a well-functioning liver and a well-functioning gallbladder in order to get the benefits from nutritional supplements with minerals. It's very common that as we get older, we don't absorb fats, we don't utilize fats, and then you won't be utilizing or absorbing minerals either. I would be getting on the ultimate enzymes from longevity. I'd be making sure I was taking them with all my meals. To get optimal use of your nutritional supplements, order Ultimate Enzymes from Longevity by calling 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Or on the web at brightsidebed.com. That's brightsidebed.com. Order today. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Ovaltine. Give your kids the nutrition they need to be their best. Visit us at OvaltineUSA.com. Telling your child about healthy food choices is important, but showing her what to eat goes a lot further. Have her help create the grocery list, then bring her to the store with you. Picking out healthy foods together helps kids get in the habit of thinking about what they're eating every day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at Twitter.LRN.FM. That's Twitter.LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can call in and talk about anything you want. Right now, we're talking with James in Michigan about marriage and getting the state out of it. Or do they belong there? You can share your thoughts. The we in the studio tonight is me, Derek J. Rich Paul. And Cantwell. And so we were talking about an article from... What was the Huffington Post uh, talking about a lawyer in D.C. who's making a connection, a bizarre connection, between same-sex marriage rates 
and an increase in abortions. And I want to hear that, but first we return to the phones and the fun. James, you are back on Free Talk Live. You were saying right. you were saying that uh, perhaps you should ask your brother about this. Why is that? Well, to, just because he actually he actually went through the process. Uh, he went to um, I, I forgot which state. Uh, it was a private ceremony. It just uh, he and his husband and two witnesses. You didn't attend. Um, uh, actually, it was just one of those things that was spur of the moment. They said, hey, let's go out east, you know, it's legal there, so that if and when it becomes legal here, we've already got the certificate. And at this point, you already knew he was out to you and the family and everything? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I was the first person he came out with, like, 15 years ago. So, so why did he have to travel so far? Well, because it's it's not legal in his state. So, um I forgot which state he went to uh, out east, but— Why does that matter? I, it's not illegal in places, right? Like, you don't get, you don't get arrested for being gay married. Well, he wanted a legal marriage certificate. Yeah, but what's the point? Why? It's rec- It changes your tax status. It's recognized by the federal government. Well, I would like the federal government to stop taxing single people. Well, and—, and uh, you know, I, I personally think that marriage should just be a contract between individuals. You know, just a contract between two people. If you so choose three, four, five. You know, I'm not opposed to polygamy. I don't personally agree with it. What about but dogs? Who, who's the or oh, other no, animals? No. Snakes? <laughs> no, I, I, I think that both uh, people have to be able to cons- consent to the contract. So. What if what if your dog came over and was like whining and whimpering and just really wanted uh, oh come wanted on. Some loving and, and no that's you ridiculous were like, no get away from me and you just kept <laughs> on denying James, James well, makes a good I point was in about consent with did did complain uh, did say that uh, she enjoyed it you know I asked that question because I am gay and when I started hearing all this talk about <laughs> gay marriage and why it should be illegal. A lot of the conservatives would get on TV and the radio and say, well, if you let gays get married, you know, they'll they'll be marrying multiple people. They'll marry their dogs. And I always thought, what's wrong with that? I'm not into it. But, you know, James makes a good point. It's about consent and dogs really can't. Well, if you've ever given a dog a bath, you can probably tell whether (laughs) they're consenting or not. (laughs) Good point, Rich. Any other thoughts you have tonight, James? Uh, nope, I think that's it. All right, thanks so much for the call. 855-450-FREE if you would like to disagree or agree. So let's return to this story uh, from... Yeah, I got to find out how post. he's making this, he, this... This dot connecting exercise sounds like a lot of fun. These are his words. A reduction in the opposite sex marriage rate means an increase in the percentage of women who are unmarried and who according to all available data, have much higher abortion rates than married women. You see where this is going? Okay, so the idea being that if you legalize gay marriage, there will be more single mothers, and thus this will lead to an increase in abortion. You've got it. And well, based, it sounds like that's the that's the first point. First off, his first premise is wrong because both men and women can engage in gay marriage, so there's no reason... <laughs> To believe that the number of single women would increase in the first place. So this guy needs to just study statistics or math or logic or something. And I and I also sort of doubt that there's a whole bunch of guys out there who are like really anxious to uh, to have a gay wedding who would otherwise go out and marry a woman. Right. It's, it's, <laughs> it seems sort of doubtful to me that there are guys who are like, you know, I uh, I totally like to stop having sex with women, but, you know, it's not legal for me to get married to them. And I've sort of got these, you know, pair right. bonding values. And I really value, uh, you know, state sanctioned monogamous marriage. And thus I uh, th- thus I'm not going to, you know, engage in gay relationships. I'm going to go marry a woman and give her a bunch of babies. Well, according to this D.C.-based liar, I mean lawyer, uh, (laughs) based on past experiences, institutionalizing same-sex marriage poses an enormous risk of reduced opposite-sex marriage rates. Now, this is another one that I heard trumpeted all over the place when uh, same-sex marriage started getting on the, uh, the national radar, is people said, well, it's a, it'll not decrease the uh, the opposite sex marriages, but it'll demean it. It'll make it meaningless, right? And so people won't get 
straight married anymore. Right, because, you know, state-sanctioned monogamous straight marriage is working out so well right now, right? <laughs> like, they, like it's not a completely right. meaningless concept when Elvis can go do it at a drive through in Vegas, but if uh, if gay people start going into uh, churches that allow it, then this is going to be a big problem. You know, the people who no. say these types of things, I think they must not be very secure in their own sexuality, right? Hmm. Like, if they're like, well, you know, I'm really into this whole straight sex thing, but, you know, if the state starts sanctioning gay marriages, I just might have to drop to my knees and go to a glory <laughs> hole. Like, what, what What planet are these people on? D.C. <laughs> so, uh, claiming that, uh, according to the article at uh, uh, HuffingtonPost.com, claiming that opposite-sex marriage rates have declined in the time that same-sex marriage has been recognized across many states and abroad, he implies that up to 900,000 children could be aborted as a result of their mothers never marrying. And as you point out, Cantwell, <laughs> well, they weren't going to marry gay men anyway. So here's the th- here's I'm going to try to work with this guy here. Okay, so so here's where I see this if there if that correlation exists, and I haven't seen the data, but I I actually think the data sounds plausible. I think he's just missing something. Okay, mm-hmm. there is across this country a a growing left wing influence. Okay, that that uh, and gay marriage tends to be part of that series of issues that yeah. these people are into. Those issues, those those left liberal social values, the feminism, the gender equality stuff, and all of this crap is a the situation flag. that does terrible things to the family unit, right? When people are just abdicating responsibility and they don't think that uh, that uh, genders have roles and that sort of thing. That's why you get to a point where we've got something like 50% of all marriages end in divorce at this point because there's no—the uh, the family values, the family unit has been completely destroyed. And Karl Marx absolutely stated that explicitly, that that was the whole entire— Entire point. So as those left liberal social values, which include gay marriage, spread across the country, I'm not surprised that there's more single mothers and divorced people and problems in families and abortions. See, I don't think treating e- treating people equally is a leftist thing. I think forcing people to bake cakes they don't want to bake, that's a leftist <laughs> thing. But treating people equally should, I think, under the law, should should be a centrist position. I I really do. Aren't don't conservatives uh, rally for the right to discriminate? I think that they should. I think not enough of them do. I'm really angry with Mike Pence right now for backing down on the religious freedom law, the governor of Indiana. Oh, yeah. He started that mm. whole thing. Okay. And then he backed down and he said, well, we'll add things to it so that it won't allow discrimination. I'm like, well, yeah, he made you know. it pointless, right? I mean, I, I think we're all of us uh, are here for the freedom to discriminate. Well, they didn't necessarily make it pointless because they excluded um, certain kinds of discrimination from the law, but the law is very broadly written. It says uh, what it claims is that the state will not unne- unnecessarily burden uh, your free exercise of religion without a compelling state interest in doing so. Oh, so and that there could are mean a lot anything. Of other kinds of church, exactly. It doesn't say anything about discrimination. Uh, and as a matter of fact, there was no law in Indiana prior to the passage of this re- religious freedom law forbidden, forbidding. Uh, discriminating against homosexuals. There were so a number of people local laws. claimed that the purpose of the law was to create a loophole in a law that didn't exist, but the actual effect of the law may actually be very salutary with respect to cannabis churches, with respect to uh, Wiccans, uh, all kinds of people. There are a number of local municipalities that had banned uh, discrimination on a number of different categories, and there was some suspicion that it was at a state level to overturn those laws. Are you ah. for discrimination? I am. I want to know who the bigots are. 855 450 free. That's the toll free call in line. Share your thoughts. This is Free Talk Live. Hi, Ron Paul here. Today, I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare. 
the erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. By now you may have heard a bit about bitcoins, but did you know bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning bitcoins or trying to make money in the bitcoin market, you've got to know bidbit.co. Why? Because bidbit.co is where you can easily receive bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for bitcoin at bidbit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer bidbit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and and free to bid at bitbit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. Bidbit.co. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path, beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way. Love as your guide. And liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Same-sex marriage. Does welcoming same-sex marriage to this country make... Abortion, more likely. That's the argument being made by one D.C. lawyer. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in and take control. 855-450-3733 gets you on the air. You can also Skype LRN.FM. But we return to this story from the Huffington Post, which is a recap of a story <laughs> that broke at the Daily Signal. Apparently, that's the blog of the Heritage Foundation, their news site. And that's where this D.C.-based attorney is making headlines. So we return to this article uh, where he's making this argument that same-sex marriage in America will lead to more abortions. What do you think? Well, he says, in short, forcing states to convert the traditional gendered marriage institution into a genderless institution will very likely reduce 
man-woman marriages by undermining some of the norms that are in, that encourage heterosexual couples to marry, which in turn will increase the number of unmarried women and hence the number of children aborted. Boy, that's a stretch, isn't it? I, I just don't mm. think that he's tying the right issue to it, right? As, as, I, as I said before we went out before, I do think that he's got a legitimate concern. I just don't think it has anything to do with, with gay couples. I think the, the problem that we're facing is that uh, look, the, the gay marriage issue is, as far as I'm concerned, a, a leftist thing. I don't think that we should be uh, pushing for gay marriage licenses. What about licenses. the log cabin Repub- Aren't there a, a group of Republicans that are gay who, who promote same-sex marriage? I'm not surprised that there are leftists in the Republican Party. My, my, oh, my, come my, on. That's It's an egalitarian point of view. Can't they be conservatives and support same-sex marriage? I think that they could be conservatives and ask to repeal the marriage license. But oh, no, no I don't. conservatives are doing that. Well, they should. That's what they should be doing, <laughs> getting right. government out of the way. That's what conservatives are supposed to be doing. And the fact that conservatives aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing is part of the reason I got sick of the Republican Party. Interestingly enough, the one thing that has led uh, a couple of conservatives that I've talked to to the idea that maybe we shouldn't be performing uh, marriages at all. We're arguing exactly this issue of gay marriage, and they say, well, if if, if we're going to have a gay marriage, we might as well not do it at all. And I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I'm right there with you. You might as well not do it at all in the first place. But so long as you're doing it, you should do it equally for everybody. It was a liberal who changed my mind on this issue. I was out working for the ACLU at the time when I was on the streets asking this man, hey, it looks like you support same-sex marriage. And he said, actually, I do. But I don't think the state should be involved. And it blew my mind. This is a man who was married and had children. I could see them. They were, they were present, and uh, he was hanging with them. They were present for the conversation as well. So this was a presumably a liberal who was making the argument that the state shouldn't be involved, even though he is a supporter of same-sex marriage. And and, and the thing is that it, it drives me crazy when I see libertarians touting this stuff, right? I mean, I don't I don't think that marriage licenses help people. I don't think it's a good thing. But what, apparently a lot of gay people disagree with you because they're moving to different states so that they can get one. And a lot of gay people vote Democrat and think that the <laughs> Obamacare is wonderful. And I'm sorry that that, that that particular demographic has been targeted by the left. So why are they wrong? Why why, why will marriage licenses not help them? Because this is a disagreement that I have with one of my co-hosts on another show that I do, Flaming Freedom, uh, a gay um, liberty-themed talk show. Dale says that marriage licenses are a great thing and we should have them in every state. Well, I don't know how he's coming to that, and I we have yet because to see. I he think. didn't say marriage licenses are a great thing. Yeah, did because, he or no, did he no. say, Does he want state out of marriage? Yes, he does. I'm I sure know he Darryl does too. I'm so sure he does. You, I think you point, misrepresented him no, there. No, his point is <laughs> that we live in a time when you need a marriage license in to order do what? to. Oh, sorry. To, in order to, to say. Yeah, in order to visit your loved ones in a hospital. Since when? You didn't. Like, you where does that actually Don't you happen? Know that quite often hospitals will only let family members in. Yes, that is a common thing. Yes, yeah, and, also, and I had a I had a black friend in ICU, and they said family only, and I said, "Well, he's my brother. Get out of my way!" Right, and yeah. I just walked in there, and they didn't do anything to stop mm. me. I well, have to imagine maybe they don't want to lie. Uh, may also, if there are children adopted. There's a question of what happens to those children if one parent dies. If you're a married couple, it goes to the other spouse. If you're not a married couple, it goes to the grandparents or into foster care. Could go anywhere. Well, you can uh, you can delegate that in a will, first of all. And and the other thing, uh, so if, if we're talking about uh, hospitals Do that are making decisions... Do straight people have to delegate that in a will? No, they can get married and have it done automatically. Well, they can also be like biologically parents of the of the child and not get married, and then it goes off to the other parent. But the, the, we, we, that's terribly unlikely to happen with gay couples. So if you're going to get it, you're going to adopt someone by a contract, then why don't you just make that part of the contract? Let's go to the phones and the fun. Robert is in Pennsylvania. What's on your mind, Robert? Hey, how you doing, guys? Excellent. I'm not doing so good, um, Robert. I, like, slept all day. Oh, my, no. my My whole sleeping schedule was out of whack, and I don't know. I, no, I tried get I used to started. take, like, Benadryls at night, but then they started making me groggy. Do you have any advice? Yeah, I do. Uh, I think we should have another Lemonade Freedom Day one of these days. 
Yeah. That sounds like fun. <laughs> the Union of Unemployed uh, uh, People would be down with that. <laughs> I uh, I actually wanted to talk to you about um uh the uh the button to end government. Oh. I like that topic. So wh- what is this? Set it up for us. Well, I mean, uh, I, I know that uh, you some 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 people on uh, on Free Talk Live have had you know uh, disagreements about you know if there was a button to end government, um, who would push it and who wouldn't push it and things like that. Yeah. Um, and I heard, uh, yeah, I heard uh, Chris Cantwell arguing uh, quite a few times in favor of pushing that button. Yeah. Um, Seems I, like a no-brainer. Yeah, I, yeah it, it it absolutely is a no-brainer if you ask me. Um, and, and, and to be honest with you, I can't, I, it's, it's very difficult to believe that, you know, any libertarian or anarchist who is, you know, working everything they do every single day of their life, right, practically to end the state and they would have this magical button and they wouldn't do it. It's, it's, it's just absurd. I wouldn't do it. What? I wouldn't do it. Why? Because if you push that button right now... You haven't ended the concept of the state. You've ended the existence of a particular state. Ah. And since most of your neighbors are statists, they would ima- uh, immediately uh, establish a new state. Not just that, but your neighbors are also <laughs> way stupider than the founding fathers were. And the founding fathers at least tried to limit government. There may be no such provision in a new totalitarian government that grows up in the wake of somebody pushing that button. So I want to educate people until at least half of us in some geographical area are anarchists, and then I want to end a- end government in that area. Are you under the impression that the government as it exists right now is doing something to curtail the behavior of these animals that you're so concerned about? Like, like the, 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 the government existing right now. So, like, people are stupid and have bad ideas, right? And so we— Speak what, you, for yourself. You believe well, that yes, we need gover- to have a government? Oh, I'm sorry. We need to have a government to keep those people in line, and it's doing a real good job of doing that in the meantime? Well, the one thing that the government does do pretty successfully is percent, prevent the establishment of any other government uh, within its, uh, its territory. And considering that, you know, most— all governments in the world are worse. I would rather have the devil we know than the devil we don't. So you're scared. I want to hear what Robert scurred? has to say about this. Uh, how do you take Rich's explanation of why he would not push the button that eliminates government? Well, I mean, I, I agree with a lot of what uh, Rich Rich said. You know, if if uh, if 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 government disappears tomorrow. There are going to be people all over trying to start a new government. Yeah. But, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, there's, there's, there's uh, I mean, obviously we're the minority, but, I mean, the, the people who are not, who do not want to be governed, it's going to be a heck of a lot harder to get them to, uh, to, to submit to some new government, you know, once this one's in place. I mean, try to get people to recognize the next government is, is, is going to be rather difficult, if you ask me. But, but to me, the most important thing, um, is you know if if you if you knew that you know there, there that you had a button that would stop rapists from raping if you saw a group of men raping a woman um, and you could push a button to stop it would you push that button yeah it's called if a trigger a of, <laughs> <laughs> if, if you saw if you saw a group of people who were who were you know mugging somebody would you do that if if, if you saw people that were just using violence against against other individuals would you use that button to push it to stop that and i would say yeah and then that's why i mean if, if you if you could push the button to stop the violence then you would stop the legit look that legitimate the, the, the one that people think is legitimate because the violence that people think is legitimate and then you know anything that happens after that is on them the sad hang, hang with us the sad Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Indefinite extension of the human lifespan is coming. But is it coming soon enough for you and me? 
That's the $80,000 question. I say $80,000 because that's what it costs to have your head cryonically frozen by Alcor. I've committed to do it. I got a life insurance policy, and I made them the uh, beneficiaries. Bam, my best shot at living forever. Interested? Contact them at Alcor.org. A-L-C-O-R dot O-R-G. Mention my name, and I get a free year of membership. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, April 21st, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.16 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,201 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $226. Antiwar.com reports at least 46 people are dead and several hundred others wounded after Saudi warplanes launched attacks on the outskirts of a missile depot in the Yemeni capital city of Sana'a yesterday. No military casualties were reported in the strike, which set off a string of explosions around residential neighborhoods in Sana'a. Many of the casualties were from explosions blowing out windows in people's homes. Saudi officials defended the huge civilian death toll, insisting the fact that their airstrikes on a known missile depot had caused explosions at all proved the Houthis had been storing their own small arms in the area. Saudi military spokesman Brigadier General Ahmed Asseri went on to say that yesterday's strikes were part of a new phase of a war against the Houthis, one which he insisted would include protection of civilians. So far, the phase seems not to be off to a great start. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a commercial chicken facility in Iowa is euthanizing 5.3 million hens after bird flu was detected. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service Laboratories in Ames, Iowa conducted tests on the animals after the Osceola County facility experienced an uptick in deaths among its flock. The chickens tested positive for H5N2 avian influenza, which is considered high pathogenic in birds. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says it is rare for humans to contract the class of influenza in which H5N2 falls. Though no human infection of the virus has ever been recorded, the recent uptick in U.S. cases in chickens and turkeys could lead to a human infection. The Iowa Department of Agriculture said all hens at the Iowa facility were quarantined and were scheduled to be euthanized, adding that people should avoid contact with sick-slash-dead poultry or wildlife. If contact occurs, wash your hands with soap and water and change clothing before having any contact with healthy domestic poultry and birds. In March, the same strain of avian flu was responsible for killing killing 15,000 turkeys in Minnesota and sickening 40,000 turkeys in Arkansas. 
In Survivor Max by Dobby Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. Reuters reports a Utah mother who pled guilty to murdering six of her newborn infants over the course of a decade was sentenced on Monday to between 15 years to life in prison. Megan Huntsman confessed to suffocating or strangling babies while she suffered from methamphetamine and alcohol addiction. The remains of the six infants were found in April 2014, wrapped in old towels, shirts, and plastic bags inside boxes in the garage of her home about 40 miles north of Provo. The body of a seventh infant was discovered disposed in the the same way, but authorities have said they believe that child to be stillborn. Police have said Huntsman secretly gave birth to all seven without medical assistance at the house after apparently managing to conceal her pregnancies from the outside world. The case of serial infanticide came to light when Huntsman's estranged husband, Darren West, later confirmed by DNA tests to have fathered all of the victims, stumbled on one of the tiny bodies while cleaning out the garage and notified authorities. Neither West nor any of Huntsman's three surviving daughters aged 14, 18, and 20 at the time of her arrest was considered a suspect. At least one of the three, the youngest, was born during the period of time in which her sibling infants were slain. Huntsman was not eligible for the death penalty because the murders, which took place between 1996 and 2006, predate changes in the law that would have made the offense a capital crime in Utah. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A new report from the Department of Health and Human Services urges Americans to do something, anything at all. According to the study, getting off your ass and doing any sort of physical or mental activity could have positive health effects. Look, we're not expecting you to go to the gym. That's clearly not happening. Just walk outside for a few blocks and then come back home. You can bring potato chips if that's what it'll take. For many years, the health department has encouraged Americans to watch less TV. But this report reverses that, saying, quote, watch whatever the hell you want, but at least pay attention and remember who the characters are. Or just admire the colors. Colors are pretty. It's expected that following the advice in this report will cut down on the largest cause of death among Americans, laying on your back until your mouth fills up with saliva and you drown. Following the report's release, the most popular exercise now seems to be masturbating. But researchers warn that if you do it in public, stick to the sidewalk or you might get hit by cars. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live is back for hour number three. 855-450-FREE is our toll-free call-in line. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three, or call in on Skype. You'll sound better that way. Our username is lrn.fm. We in the studio includes me, Derek J. Rich Paul. And Cantwell. And we are discussing whether or not we would push a button that would end government. And more than just end government, what about other buttons? What about buttons that would end rape? Uh, This question posed to us by Robert in Pennsylvania, who joins us back on Free Talk Live. Uh, Robert, uh, what what are your thoughts? Yeah, so like I said, I mean, if if you could, you know, end violence at the push of a button, um, you know, especially this institutionalized violence that will, you know, in in essence, release people from cages um, and, uh, you know, stop uh, beating down people's doors for, uh, for, for having plants and, you know, uh, for not paying a fee to the, to the government and things like that, then I, you know, I think it's, it's, you know, like you said, you know, initially Derek, it's, it's a no brainer. How many wars are being waged right now that would be, that would be ended by a button that did nothing more than abolish the modern American state as it stands. That would mean that the troops that are over there fighting these wars, I've lost track of how many wars America is at right now, by the way, right? Like, I don't even know. They just got so many new words for war now. They're just like, oh, we, we sent all these troops into this country and started bombing buildings, but that's not exactly a war. So like they're doing all these things. It's at least five conservatively, right? 
Well, perhaps I'm taking an America first perspective there because those wars would end, but then a lot of wars would start here between the various factions that were vying to be in control of the new government. Yeah, but, and but what about when Robert's you talk point? about your rape button or your murder button, you're you're ending a concept. Now, if if the button you're talking about uh, is a button that would make it impossible to have a government. Well, I would certainly. No. that's a different. That's a different matter than one that just destroys government for the moment. No, that's but, not what we're talking about. It's would you end government for the moment? And now I'm agreeing even more than ever with Robert's position here. That yeah, of course I would push that button uh, because it gives us freedom lovers an opportunity. It might be days. It might be weeks. Could possibly be months if we're lucky but we've got an opportunity to really live in freedom we don't have to worry about uh car registration we don't have to worry about i don't know some of the things that bother you think, think uh, for one go, second going about to jail for cannabis possession how much effort we go through right now to hinder the operations of the state that guys take a five dollar parking ticket to trial yeah right? so like imagine we were applying all of those efforts towards an effort to establish a new government Right. It would be a, such a yeah. catastrophic failure for them to try to operate uh, to to establish a new government in that fashion. And the other thing, too, is I think it would be extraordinarily difficult for them to manage uh, to create a, a massive central state like we have in America today. Yeah. I mean, if, mm -hmm. if people if, you know, if the city of Keene wanted to set up the city of Keene all over again and then, uh, you know, Tamworth had a little trouble putting that together, but they couldn't get a federal government back together. That means I could go up and live in Tamworth and not worry about all this stuff. You know, if we're going to be safe, if there's, a, you know, if the government disappears for a day, it, they're they're not coming back and getting my consent. And if you and if and if and well, if they're factions... not going to get your consent, but the but the small percentage of people that that if this were to happen tomorrow, th it wouldn't take very long to kill all the anarchists and then proceed with uh -oh. establishing your government. Well, it would we... be very easy because we're a tiny fraction of the population. I say, bring now, it on. We're... If, if, if we if were you ten percent, have... we might be able to monkey wrench the establishment of a government, but not one percent. Well, I w I say bring it on. If if people want to have start having factional uh, warfare between institutions that want to set up uh, central states, then let them do it. And I'll tell you what, the left will lose that. Okay, the only reason the left is able to do anything is because they've got uh, they've got the power of the state on their side. When they're left uh -huh. without their guns, when they're when they're left trying to uh, to oppress gun owners. Without an existing state, good luck. You want to go to war with the gun owners? You lunatics, give it a shot. Great. Then we end up with Namaya Scudder, if anybody rem remembers the old Robert no. Heinlein uh, character, the religious dictator of America. That's a very real possibility because, mm. as you pointed out, the left is unarmed. What you failed to note there is that a lot of the right is made up of religious lunatics mm -hmm. who will take their guns, kill off the liberal and any libertarians who try and stop them because they've got a lot more people and a lot more guns than we have and then they'll establish a theocracy that is probably the most likely scenario i'll send them to meet you, their god uh, <laughs> there's a lot more to say on this topic but i want to change gears for just a moment because this robert that we're speaking with is a very special robert he's the robert behind lemonade freedom day and i want to know lemonadefreedom.com is the website is there going to be a lemonade freedom day 2015 uh, I'm hoping so. I mean, I, to be honest with you, I was a little bit busy last year, and I skipped it last year. And last year was the first year that I skipped it, so I'm hoping to do something this year for it. Um, luckily, last year there wasn't too much in the news about uh, you know kids' uh, lemonade stands being shut down. Um, but I mean, I, I did hear some stuff over the winter about uh, kids being stopped from prevent from uh, shoveling snow in the in the winter by cops for not having permits for that. So I mean. The war is still on. It's it's uh, it's uh, you know it's 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 constantly. I mean you know every 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 license and permit that's that's you know required of us is is basically a threat to our freedom. I thought it was such um, a know, great idea. It, get kids out there, help them learn entrepreneurship, and uh, get their feet wet. 
in the world of marketing, yeah, sales. Yeah. They learn so much uh, meeting the people and, and vending lemonade. And it's an age-old tradition in America. It's sad that it's not yeah. happening more often, but it's because, like you say, these kids are getting shut down by the police. Can't, well, weren't you yeah, at a exactly. Lemonade Freedom Day? Yeah, I was going to say, I did it, and I believe it was 2013. I was there with uh, Robert. And, uh, I think you were there, right? Were no, there? I wasn't oh, okay. able to make it. So, uh, But uh, it was in Philadelphia. Yeah, we were in Philadelphia. We did it. I had a yep. video up about that, got around quite a bit, and I think it was a it was a real blast. I mean, we had the, the children were selling the lemonade, then the police came, and we were like, <laughs> we got the children out of there, and then I got on the bullhorn. I said, we had to get the children out of here because the police came. How do you feel about that, Philadelphia, that we have to hide the children from the police? <laughs> hide your wife. Hide your kids. <laughs> hey, Robert, uh, yeah. thanks so much for the call tonight. Let's do it on the Statehouse lawn this year. Good idea. There you go. So back to this idea of uh, pushing the button to end government. Cantwell, you you had more to say on the topic. I could do this for six episodes of Free Talk Live straight and cut out so, all the commercial parts. You know this it's is never going to happen. What's the closest thing that uh, to it, in real life to the uh, pushing the button that ends government? I mean, is there anything that compares? Yes, educate 50% of the people to be anarchists and you won't need the button. No, I don't think that that compares with the button. The I comp- like Rich's point, though. It's about a philosophical understanding. It's not about you see, using in order force. To right? impl- think about how the button would work. If the button were to have a permanent effect, the only way that it could work would be by reaching inside the hearts and minds mm. of every human on Earth and inst- instilling in them a set of values chosen by me. He's I'm right. not willing to take that responsibility to reprogram people's frigging brains, and anything short of that would result in an utter bloodbath. I'm talking millions and millions of deaths in the United States. Well, I don't want to see that. I want to see it be a no-brainer when government goes goes away that we don't need another one, not just for me, but for the vast majority of the people who are over there who are out there so that the status are slapped down as easily as we would be now. Governments how- murdered 260 million of their own citizens in the 20th century alone. If you're talking to me about millions of deaths, sir, I can tell you how to avoid them, and that's you push the button to abolish the state. It's Amen. not a difficult thing to figure out. And hang on a second. How many states have been abolished in the 20th century, and yet the killing went on with because new people and won't push the buttons. and more brutal well, to uh, that end, states? Haven- the Weimar Republic fell but it was replaced by Hitler. The the czars fell but they were replaced by Stalin. Because but aren't they, states becoming smaller and more decentralized? What? Not yeah, around because here. there are more of them and they are smaller, aren't they? Are there more now? I mean, I smaller they, in population. I, not see, in, I see massive centralizations going on. I mean, I think that we're going to end up with the North American Union at some only point. Only in We've the U.S. Got the European Union is is the other thing. I yeah, mean, but you're so North America centric. I'm at Europe. talking about That's Europe. That's the only place I live. I'm talking about Europe. <laughs> what do you think? Share your thoughts. This is Free Talk Live, eight fifty five four fifty free. Would you push a button to end government? Hi, Ron Paul here. Today, I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare. The erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. 
On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw of free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 68 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That is the toll free call in line. Share your thoughts with us tonight about weed. Pushing a button to end government, Rand Paul, lemonade stands, anything that might be on your mind. You can also Skype into the show. You'll sound better that way. LRN.FM is our username. And you need to protect yourself online. Your internet service provider is likely saving your surfing history. Criminals are sniffing your Wi-Fi packets. Governments and corporations are limiting what you can see on the internet. Criminals, governments, but I repeat myself. ProXPN can solve all of that. Simply download an app for Windows, Mac, iOS, or Android, even Linux. Then just connect to the internet, and you're protected from all of that. No more prying and spying. One account works for all of your devices. No need to have a separate account for each device. Just go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and use the promo code FTL50, and you'll get 50% off an annual account. That's almost $5 a month. Through FTL50, will get you savings for the lifetime of the account, no matter which premium account you go with. With the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth. With servers all around the world to access, the ability to private torrent, privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites, and, this is important, ProXPN doesn't keep
keep records of your online habits at all. You get all of that with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Go to proxpn.com FTL. Use promo code FTL50 and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Now, we return to our discussion of pushing a button that ends government. Then we're going to get to Rand Paul, but before we do... Chris, you had an economic argument that you wanted right. to make. Right. I mean, look, if we've uh, if we've done some study of economics, right? I mean, we know that government has provides all these perverse incentives to do all these ridiculous things. It perpetuates itself, and that. Okay? Oh my! So I would say that we we sort of if uh, our study of economics would tell us that if a bunch of people woke up one morning without the government interfering in the economy, that people would sort of be incentivized to then go out and serve their fellow man, to go act in a market environment, to go out and provide services instead of stealing. Imagine a police officer wakes up in the morning and he's like, hmm, you know, I'm not a police officer anymore or the police station isn't there. But, you know, I've sort of got this career in uh, uh, providing this uh, this particular type of service to a community. Well, he does not then have the ability to go out and tax his fellow man to collect his paycheck. Right. What's he going to do? He's going to go out and say, hey, well, uh, I'm still happy to provide you with all this protection that you were all really enthusiastic about me providing before. Would you like to now pay me to provide that protection? Well, actually, if the government just existed without the individuals that made up government existing, then what's usually happened when governments have dissol- dissolved is that their militaries have devolved into roving bands and done what militaries call living off the land, which means moving into your house, stealing your stuff, and slaving you having hmm. sex with your wife and Uh-oh. probably killing you sooner or later so you know somebody has to figure out what we're going to do about these roving bands uh and i without, say we kill them um well that can be done but there's more of them than there are of you no there aren't as a matter of well fact armed. there's very few of them they are like less than 0.6 percent of the population who as are it we turns talking out. about Perhaps, okay the people in the who are in the business definition of you then the, the, because i think there are more cops than anarchists right now i don't need anarchists i need people who are not enthusiastic about their right wife getting raped okay so and i think that there are plenty of them the the, the, the people in the actual business of doing violence for the state are less than 0.6 percent of the population that's military and police put together uh-huh. so they're they're a very small percentage of the population i'm pretty sure greater than 50 percent of the population is not hot on the idea of their wife getting a train run on her by a bunch of ex-military yeah, guys but how many of them have guns and are willing to use them in new hampshire there's probably quite a and few plenty in, of in, cop suckers to lend up uh, to join up with them too remember that's the, good point the a lot of the armed people in this country are fascists straight up fascists. I think that most of the gun owners in this country are people who don't really have uh, enough of a political opinion to call themselves fascists. They more or less <laughs> want to keep their guns and they're not really thinking about economics or anything else. We don't need the population to be anarchists. We don't need them to be uh, anarcho-capitalists to have an anarchist society any more than we need them to be Austrian economists to have a market economy. Right? Yeah. They don't need to agree with this stuff. They just need to have the option to take taken away from them to go out and oppress their fellow man. And once they don't have that choice, they're going to have to get along in a market environment. That's right. Government is often referred to as the gun in the room because uh, it's sort of this invisible violence that people will wield over their neighbors. And uh, the point you're making, Chris, it seems to me that if the world is absent of this gun in the room, then people aren't going to use it. Is that well, Clear? I mean, look, if, if I'm not saying that it's impossible for people to get together and try to organize another state. I just think it would be incredibly clumsy of them to try to do it in the absence of a central state. When you're talking right. about these other republics falling, well, what's actually happening is, you know, they're, they're sort of uh, finding themselves financially insolvent. People are getting fed up with them or whatever. Mm-hmm. But that, that government apparatus is being taken over by some group of people who's calling itself the new government. It's not – it's the same thing. People talk about, like, uh, 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 free societies defending themselves themselves against a foreign invasion. Well, why does a foreign government invade a government? Why does a foreign government invade a country? Well, they do it to take over the existing state apparatus, and thus invasion of an anarchist society is terribly unincentivized. Yeah. And so I well, think it's the same exact premise. they also steal the wealth. No. They, 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 how do they steal the wealth? Through the existing state apparatus. They don't go in. Sure they do. They ransack they houses. Blasted they blasted the, the government of Iraq out of existence and built their own puppet. 
Well, I don't think they blasted they the government of, of Iraq out of existence at all. What they did was take over the government of Iraq. Right. Yeah. They didn't. They, you know, it's not like the Iraq, uh, you know, uh, government ceased to exist. They banned the Ba'ath Party, it's, it's, but then a bunch of people who were in the Ba'ath Party just were like, okay, now we're in the blah 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 party, and then we're something else. It's hard to take over something you already had control of, though. Well, exactly. But you know, sort of the the people that they had put in control of it got a little bit belligerent, and they uh-huh. were like, okay, now we're going to go kill a bunch of people and start right. over again, right? right. Yeah. And this is what has happened it worked out all so well the first two times the the the, the overthrow <laughs> of the libyan government right did they do they did, it wasn't like the libyan government got abolished it was just we're going to put some other people in control of the libyan government although that's actually a really good example of the kind of thing that happens i mean i wouldn't have wanted to live under the libyan government but i wouldn't <laughs> want to live under isis either as a matter of fact i would say that the libyan government pre-isis was probably a little bit preferable to isis which i will mm-hmm. point out was our and created by the United States government, as last I heard. Yeah, but you know who's going to solve it all? Rand Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. But yet, I am uh, endorsing Rand Paul for the Republican nomination for president. Why? Well, uh, now he's definitely going to lose. <laughs> have you seen the other guys? Huh? Have you seen the other guys? Um. Yeah, I guess there's no one good, is there? Uh, there's no one better. <laughs> And is you that know, your qualification for selecting a candidate? I mean, yeah, who, are, who are you endorsing on the Democratic ticket? I wouldn't go I'm to the not endorsing anybody because uh, there's nobody there who deserves an endorsement. You know, I go to the Roadkill Cafe. I just don't choose from the menu. <laughs> um, nice. Well, I prefer Rand Paul, and I also still trust Ron Paul. And he was standing next to Rand when Rand announced, and that means something to me. What do you think about Rand Paul? Is he going to eliminate government? <laughs> no. Free Talk Live. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional installation. You control what you watch when you watch it. Record your favorite shows, pause and rewind live TV, even skip the commercials. Watch local channels too. At just $19.99, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas there's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty there's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it but here in new hampshire people are doing it 101 reasons liberty lives in new hampshire a documentary by free state project early movers watch it free at 101 reasonsfilm.com 101 reasonsfilm.com Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Are you making sense to the boomer mindset? I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com. 80 million baby boomers comprise 25% of the population and control most of the USA's wealth. As aging parents pass on, they'll control more. Boomers are 46 to 65 years old and regard themselves as midlife. They identify as neither young nor old. They're post minivan and pre retirement. And they don't like being called boomers. They think me. Many of the purchases boomer couples make are individual purposes. They've been experimenters all their lives. If you want their attention, tell stories and keep it simple. If something seems complicated, boomers can dismiss it as, I don't need this. And if you're looking for work, you may be applying to a boomer, so relate accordingly. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Who are you voting for this election cycle? Will it be... Vermin Supreme, or some or other just vermin. Some <laughs> other vermin. <laughs> this is Free Talk Live. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three is our toll free call in line. Share your thoughts. I want to know what you think about the potential candidates for President of the United States. Would you push the button to abolish Rand Paul, <laughs> <laughs> or should we just get it all over with and get a king? Uh, so you can Skype in, share your thoughts. LRN.FM. I had some amazing wine this week from Cameron Hughes. It was a Cabernet Sauvignon and a Pinot Noir, and they were both amazing. Uh, both some of the best wines that I've had in my life. No exaggeration. It blew me away. And I want to share this offer with you. Cameron Hughes has a special offer for Free Talk Live listeners. You can get free shipping on some of the best wine on earth. These are High dollar labels without the high dollar cost. They're rebottled. Cameron Hughes slaps his name and logo on it, and you get to enjoy some of the best wine for less. You can also get free shipping and up to 20% off. Go to chwine.com, click on the microphone in the upper left hand corner, enter code FTL. That's chwine.com, go to the microphone. And enter FTL. Don't wait. This offer won't last. And if you have like been like me and you're buying cheap supermarket wine and that sort of thing, and you're not used to drinking very good wine, I Treat really, yourself. really want you to go check this out because you don't realize these these rich people really do. Uh, they, they they got it good. They really do have something going on there, and uh, it's to to be able to get it at those prices is kind of crazy. Yeah, it did help me understand what I was missing out on because I, like you, uh, have not experienced high dollar uh, bottles of wine until. I experienced Cameron Hughes. I have I have gone and gotten like really good scotch before, right? Yeah. Like as opposed to, you know, I've got a bottle of Canadian LTD half finished on my desk right now. And like it's the <laughs> okay. cheapest thing in the New Hampshire liquor store. But it comes uh, in a plastic bag, right? And when you <laughs> <laughs> and then and but then, you know, if you've ever gotten to taste something like Johnny uh Johnny Walker Blue Label or something like oh, that, yeah, then you yeah, realize like, nice. wow, these rich people really got something going on here. And then it, it is very similar with the wines and That's be able right. to get it at uh, free shipping no less. Oh my, whoa, and you don't whoa. have to be rich. Yeah, free shipping and 20% off. chwines.com. Microphone in the upper left-hand corner. 
code FTL. So we were talking about candidates and, and Rand Paul, and I'm sort of bummed that there aren't any cool candidates. Like, I got to rally behind Ron Paul for a couple of years when he was doing his presidential bid, and he gets to go up on stage and say all these principled things on mainstream television. That really got me excited. But this year, mm-hmm. I've got no one to support, except for maybe Vermin Supreme. Well, I'm I'm supporting Rand Paul. Why? Uh, there's a whole multiplicity of reasons. One is that Rand Paul's candidacy keeps Ron Paul re- uh, relevant. Okay. As long as Rand Paul is a candidate, Ron Paul is going to keep getting all the airtime that he wants from the networks because the networks are going to want him to say something that they can use to smear Rand. Oh, but at yeah, the good same point. time, he gets the air the airtime to be the conscience of the libertarian movement and backpedal from some of the things that Rand is saying to compromise and personally i th- i think they've got this kind of worked out that way because whenever rand says something bad ron paul does come along and kind of gently he sweeps it up correct him but at the same time you know i think ron paul has the integrity to bitterly denounce his son if his son was a a neocon but yeah. yet, instead of doing that, he was standing with Rand when Rand announced for the uh, for the presidency. And, you know, it, he knows Rand a lot better than I do. And he knows what they've been talking about. And so my big thing is I am going to go out and work for Rand. I don't expect him to get the, uh, the nomination. And... If I'm surprised and he does get the nomination, then I'll be faced with a question of what am I going to do next? Am I going to vote Libertarian or or am I going to vote for Rand? But if he does not get the nomination, then the next thing I do is all the connections, all the networking that I've done in the Rand Paul campaign, start trying to get those guys on board for Gary Johnson or whoever the Libertarian party. Oh, come on. Hey, like there's a chance of a third party candidate ever winning. What's the I didn't point of say them even he was running? Going to win? Well, for one thing, it's not wasting your vote, which is nice. If you vote for a Democrat or a Republican, you're wasting your vote because they're both the parties of the status quo. If you vote for a libertarian, you're telling them, not only am I not too lazy to go out and vote, I will go out and vote for something that I know to be a lost cause just on just to go on record and say say i want more liberty and less government what about doing like not voting for any of them and doing something productive like playing pac-man uh, <laughs> that will not have get a new high as score. much impact as increasing the vote total for libertarians i like if Berman's- libertarians came out and got 10 percent in this election i'm not saying it's going to happen but if they did it would be a sea change in american politics even though they would not be elected. Well, but, you know, as long as we're talking about magic buttons and libertarians getting 10% of the vote. You know, <laughs> hey, you know, you know Vermin Supreme, hey, I brought him imagine up. Imagine a Clinton running against a Bush. Jeb Bush, Hillary Clinton. That could happen this year. How many people are going to say, oh my God, the end is coming and I'm not voting for either of these animals? I certainly would. And I think a lot of people would be very horrified by that lineup. No, I don't think a lot of people would. (laughs) Jesse Ventura won in Minnesota. That does not give me hope, sir. (laughs) Including me. Strange things happen. It seems like a lot of people are rallying behind Hillary just because she's a woman. Just because it's like, hey, we got our first black president. Now it's time for a woman president. Let's spice things up in America. Right, right, right. We live in a, a rape culture where just it's a totally cool to, to to shoot a black man in the back because, you know, white patriarchy. But, uh, you know, we well, got a black president. And then what does that and, have to do with anything? Uh, <laughs> wouldn't, you t- wouldn't you tell me, Cantwell, though, that they're that they're doing the right thing? I mean, they think that that women are more likely to have the qualities that they're looking for, so they're just throwing those male resumes away. Right. Um, <laughs> well, I, I would say that the, the, the worst thing that you could possibly do is elect a woman president. I actually think that I, I'm, I'm going to use the exact same thing in the exact opposite direction. The last thing I need is some uh, emotional postmenopausal? Oh come on, Hillary Clinton oh making God. decisions for no, me at gunpoint no, sounds terrible. terrible. Okay, uh, now this is why why Cantwell speaks for the brutalists more than the libertarians. <laughs> but uh, but but no, I mean if Mary Ruart 
Okay. Uh, yeah, we can Carla, think of wonderful women. I can't women. think of Carla's name who, who was elected uh, in Massachusetts to something or other, but she was great. She, sang, oh, she must have been uh, awesome. How would we live without paying taxes? Huh. Um, married to Michael Cloud, I think. Well, Rand I don't Paul even think women should be me, able to vote. But... Well, okay, I, that's, I, a, that's a fair I don't think anybody should statement. be able to vote, and I don't think anybody should be married by the government, but well, as long I, as I people are voting and as long as women, people are, get, are getting married by the government, then everybody should have an equal right to it. Women obtaining the right to vote was like the worst thing that ever happened in America. Is it because they uh, can't be drafted, so it's kind of unfair for them to have the freedom to, to vote well, partially, us into war and, while and, they don't have any and skin I don't in think the game? They, they should, should be drafted. Be drafted I, I don't think they should be drafted, uh, even, even while men are being drafted. Right. Like you just think about how you, you just think about the biology of that. I mean, there's a reason that men are the disposable gender. OK, <laughs> I mean, after after World War Two, Germany and the Soviet Union really like beat the crap out of each other. And most a, a great number of the men were were killed in that war. Mm -hmm. And within a generation, your population numbers got back to normal. Why? Because uh, men can sort of go out and knock up a whole lot of women when they need to. And they're actually very enthusiastic and happy to do that. Mm -hmm. But if you go and send women out to fight your wars, well, that doesn't really work out the same way does it because women can't go out and get pregnant by a hundred different men tell me what you think should women lose the right to vote uh this is free talk live 855-450 free skype in at lrn.fm share your thoughts are you supporting any of the candidates or are you choosing not to vote this year free talk live Hi, Ron Paul here. Today, I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare. The erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. If you constantly feel run down and tired, your pH level might be low and your body could be full of toxins. If what you drink is not at a pH level of 8 or higher, you are inviting bacteria and acid to thrive in your body. But there is something you can do. Simply add 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops to your water to help your body rid itself of acidic waste, increase oxygen, and raise your pH balance to optimum levels. AlkaVision Plasma pH drops combine a unique formula of the most alkaline minerals in the world. Alkalizing the water you drink, ridding your body of acidic waste and toxins, and helping you regain energy and vibrant health. And studies show viruses, bacteria, and toxins cannot survive in an alkaline, high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. Free Talk Live. Dear FTL, we've got Chemtrail down here in West Virginia. Be nice. You've never seen them? <laughs> Contrail disappear relatively quickly compared <laughs> to the Chemtrail. If anybody is listening that wants to fight the Chemtrails, there's things called what are you cloud gonna, how are you fight them? Wait a minute. It's called it's cloud fans? busters. Wad busters? <laughs> I gotta give UFO hoaxers more credit. At least they go out and build a little saucer and they tie no, it to a cardboard string. saucer. And they, the yeah, I'd love to see a semi-legitimate website reporting anything on this particular uh, issue. I don't. I, I just I haven't don't seen. Think, it. I don't think you're gonna get that. Cause Semi, I just asked semi-legitimate. You want a doctor to say it? There's a bunch of ones. Oh, there's doctors. 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 Just because you're a doctor doesn't mean you're an expert I'm, or smart, or it doesn't even mean you're a doctor. <laughs> okay. Go, okay. Go on my website later on tonight, and I'll be Doctor Manwich. Okay. <laughs> Free talk live seven nights a week. For from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Should women have the right to vote is the topic we are discussing tonight, right now on Free Talk Live. But you can still call in and change the topic. You can talk about anything you want. 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE or Skype, LRN.FM. Just minutes remain, but there are still time. There is still time for your calls if you make them now. Uh, Chris, you've got me curious. I'm scratching my head here. Why do you think women shouldn't vote? Well, I think that women have a tendency to vote left. They have a they are driven to seek security. And so so that's bad. Yeah, it's terrible. So what happens is you get women uh, women get the right to vote, and then that's the, that leads in no small part to the proliferation of all these social welfare programs that we've gotten, and it's destroying the economy, and it's a major problem. Uh, how do you how do you find that? Like, how, how do you get there? Is it because uh, in the New Deal or what? What like women got the right to vote somewhere around 1918, and then uh, that's when the government exploded. In your view, yeah, I'm well, trying to bring up the exact text I of the 19th have, Amendment. I do have to say that the first feminist um, issue after women's suffrage was prohibition. Mm. Um, that was considered a big women's issue in wow. the day because men got drunk and beat their wives. Well, that's not good. And well, it's not good, but 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 I guess prohibition is people didn't stop breaking it, yeah. up bars with axes, um, yeah. as as uh, some of these people were doing. But at the same time, you know, it. Uh, I mean, stupid men vote. Yes, stupid men vote, and uh-huh. you know it used to be that voting was tied to property ownership. Yeah, right? so, you think that's better? Do you think oh, women yeah, should be absolutely. able to own property? What? Let's let's get to the bottom of this. Do you think they should be able to own property, or yes. should a man have to sign for them? I think they should be able to own property. Yeah, but what I, century are we in, Chris? <laughs> well, I I would absolutely set everything back to the Civil War. <laughs> just about everything. Okay, uh, not everything, but just about. Not far uh, enough, slavery. in my opinion. It's, uh, I want to I want to hear more on that, but first we go I'll to the phones down and the front. rabbit hole go. Jack is in <laughs> Wisconsin. What's on your mind, Jack? Hey, thanks for taking my call. Have you guys heard of this new micro nation called Liberland? No. Somebody yes. actually brought it up on Radical Agenda the other night, and I did go look at it. There's a po- uh, approximately three square miles before, between the borders of Serbia and was it Chechnya? I don't know. Is it liberal uh, land? Croatia. Or Liberland, like Liberty. Liberland. Okay. Like Liberty. All right. Yeah, the like official currency is Bitcoin, and there's no taxes. Why do they have an official currency? It seems uh, tyrannical to me. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I just just saw an article about it. I don't know too much about it, but I just kind of wanted to bring it up with you guys. The yeah, question my, to what me do you is: think Do they have it? legal tender laws? So long as there are no legal tender laws, if they want to have a, a currency to do their government business in, eh, let them. So I, so I, I, somebody had brought this up on my show, and I did go look into it afterwards. And it seems like there's there was some unclaimed land uh, between the borders of Serbia and whatever's next to Serbia. I don't remember what the what okay. the other border was. Croatia. I'm sorry. Croatia. 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 Okay, between Serbia and Croatia, there's about three square miles that was like unclaimed land. 
So this guy went over there and was like, you know, I think I claimed this land in the name of Liberland okay. and set up his little uh, republic there. Was there a flag involved? It does. Ha- they do have a flag. They do have a, um, uh, what's the... Uh, uh, you have to put a flag in the ground. See, from my understanding of uh, how nation forming works is you go with a flag to an unclaimed piece of land, and then you put it in the ground, and that makes it official. Right? Or, Did he or do a that? piece of land claimed by people you don't recognize. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> that works, too, if you bring guns. So uh, what do you think, Jack? I, I think it's kind of cool. I don't know much about it, but I just— thought you guys might know something but yeah it seems to be relatively new it looks like it uh was formed on the 13th of april so be yeah kind of cool to watch it and see what happens i don't so want to like move a... there because i feel like the culture really wouldn't accept me you know like i don't know what syria and croatia are really like maybe they're wonderful places but i'm sort of used to the culture i have here so mm. like, i don't know it, it's kind of a Big risk. The American government recently bombed Serbia and or Croatia, no, so they might be still irritated. Syria, not Serbia, right? No, Serbia they bombed, too. That was under Clinton. Oh, great. So uh, I've got this. Uh, this is the Wikipedia article for, for Liberland. Uh, Liberland, officially the Free Republic of Liberland, is a self-proclaimed— <laughs> Why is it a republic? That stinks. Uh, you know, is a self-proclaimed micronation situated on an unclaimed parcel of land at the western bank of the Danube River between Cro- Croatia and Serbia, sharing a land border with the former. It was proclaimed on 13 April 2015 by Vit Jedika. Uh, okay. I'm probably saying that wrong. The official website of Liberland states that the nation— could be created due to the ongoing Croatia-Serbia border dispute. Hmm. Um, let me see here. These... So these two governments can't even really agree where their borders end and the other country begins. So yeah, he's that's... saying, all right, well, if you can't uh, work it out, then I'll work it out for you. Here's my borders. I'm yeah. a new nation, and I'm right in between you guys. The flag late raising on Liberland was performed by Vic Jadlika there and was a flag. There, there was, and some of his associates at the same. And the same day, the republic was proclaimed. Jetlika is a member of the Czech Party of Free Citizens, which bases its values on the classical liberal ideology. Oh, then why would he want a republic? Can't you just say this is the because the classical liberals were were uh, republicans, bro? I thought yeah. uh, I Thomas thought classical... Jefferson was a classic liberal. Adam Smith was a classic. I thought liberal. classical liberalism was anarchism. No, it was mm-hmm. it was not anti-state. I mean, it was this sort of limited government, laissez-faire uh, sort of mm-hmm. ideology. Uh, as as described by Jadlika, neither Serbia, Croatia, nor any other nation claims the land as their own. The border is defined in accordance with both Croatian and Serbian border claims and does not interfere with any other state sovereignty. Jadlika has stated that an official diplomatic note shall be sent to both Croatia and Serbia to, and later to all the other states with a formal request for oh, international recognition. That's nice. So he makes it official with a piece of paper. Yeah. Uh, the, well, I mean, the idea here being, and look, I, you know, we'd we like it better if we were just like, hey, we're all, you know, free here, go go away, governments, right? Yeah. Like, I, yeah sir, we might certainly prefer that but there's yeah. certain practicalities involved that when you're on the border of two nation states and you're like hey i'm a country or i'm a free place then uh you know this they have this terrible habit of sending in government agents to kill people yeah but that hasn't happened in new hampshire and plenty of people have moved here to live free from the government yeah and everybody in this room except for me has served time in a new hampshire jail checkmate sir checkmate yeah. well played um, <laughs> you know i i you know i I, I was more hardcore. I went to jail in New York, so you know I still got my jail cred, but uh, not New Hampshire. There's jail still cred. time. Uh, I'm just, uh, don't get me started. Uh, so uh, reactions in an interview with uh, Parliament. Well, in any, in any case, so he he does seem to be seeking out like international recognition. Would ha- you with, move there? Not right now. No, I mean I'm I would, really interested. I'd check it out. It. I want to know if you need a passport because I don't have my let my passport expire, and I believe it's difficult you can for me buy to go citizen for citizenship for Bitcoin. Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, I think you need a passport to get out of the United States is more the challenge. Yeah, but what if it's a place that doesn't require a passport? Maybe you're like, no, I'm going to Liberland. You see, I don't need a passport. I don't know that Liberland has an airport. To, passport to come back. You so might pack like, a lot of underwear if you don't bring a, a passport. <laughs> I think that you would need to get a, get a flight into Serbia, Croatia, and then cross the border into Liberland, which could be a problem in and of itself. We don't know exactly how that pans out. 
Now let's apply the uh, the passport logic to uh, to gay marriage. Would it be okay if the government said, "Well, we're going to issue passports, but not to gay people"? Would would that still be a, a case where you know it's what? okay for government to treat gay people differently? Because you are saying that they'll issue marriage certificates, but not to gay people, and that would be your preferred oh, configuration. Yeah. So would you apply the same logic to passports? It's Ooh. not. Well, first of all, understand something. It's not my preferred configuration. I don't actually prefer that governments not give marriage license to gay people. I, I just don't. It's like an issue. It's a non-issue as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. But it's it's a completely different situation that you're talking about. Right, like giving a giving a gay person a passport is not a gay marriage, right? If there are people out there who believe so that you marriage give is a, them a gay hang on passport? a second, so marriage is an institution that governments had sort of uh, solidified for reasons, right? There were reasons for governments uh, instituting and recognizing marriages. If people don't believe that those conditions apply to gay couples and that's how they want to organize things, you know, it's 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 not an issue as far as I'm concerned. If you want to get government to abolish marriage, that is something that I will enthusiastically support. I don't want government marriage to exist, but it was established for reasons that had that pertain to reproduction. And since gay couples are terribly unlikely to do this, I don't have a problem with governments not issuing marriage licenses to gay couples. Passports are just about travel. It has nothing to do with any of that subject matter. I say all the gays should go move to Liberland. Hey, thanks for the call tonight, Jack. We're out of time for this episode of Free Talk Live, but catch us online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. We'll be back tomorrow. Free Talk. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a no. minute. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Rebel Love Show is next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, April 21st, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.16 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,201 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $226.
Antiwar.com reports at least 46 people are dead and several hundred others wounded after Saudi warplanes launched attacks on the outskirts of a missile depot in the Yemeni capital city of Sana'a yesterday. No military casualties were reported in the strike, which set off a string of explosions around residential neighborhoods in Sana'a. Many of the casualties were from explosions blowing out windows in people's homes. Saudi officials defended the huge civilian death toll, insisting the fact that their airstrikes on a known missile depot had caused explosions at all proved the Houthis had been storing their own small arms in the area. Saudi military spokesman Brigadier General Ahmed Asseri went on to say that yesterday's strikes were part of a new phase of a war against the Houthis, one which he insisted would include protection of civilians. So far, the phase seems not to be off to a great start. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a commercial chicken facility in Iowa is euthanizing 5.3 million hens after bird flu was detected. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service Laboratories in Ames, Iowa conducted tests on the animals after the Osceola County facility experienced an uptick in deaths among its flock. The chickens tested positive for H5N2 avian influenza, which is considered high pathogenic in birds. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says it is rare for humans to contract the class of influenza in which H5N2 falls. Though no human infection of the virus has ever been recorded, the recent uptick in U.S. cases in chickens in 